Hey, what a very, very special night. My favorite night of any month. It's the night of the official full moon for October. Ow! My partner on the grass, Brian Adams, longtime captain of this Bright House Networks High School Football Game of the Week. You always know when it's a full moon. I'm a little crazy. I'm a little different. But what about this football game tonight? West High School, Golden Valley, a showdown of quarterbacks and receivers. Got no Brian, boys. Got no Brian. All right, we'll get down to Brian in a second. I don't have Brian. Let's get to Matt. Matt, I'm sure Brian said something to the effect of these two great passing and receiving teams. Uh, these schools know how to air the ball out, Vance. You have West, who comes in averaging 207 yards a game through the air, and you have Golden Valley, who comes in averaging 214 yards a game through the air, Vance, and that's very unlike the teams that we've seen play this year, where all they've done is run the ball. These two teams know how to get it done through the air, Vance. I jinxed Brian with the full moon reference. I should have known. I should have known I would jinx him with a full moon reference. Well, I'm Vance Paul. I'm joined by Matt Alvarez up top in the premier equipment room of Scissor Rental, uh, Scissor Lift, and I've got Brian down to the grass. Brian, are you with us? Not yet. We'll get him there. Here comes the kickoff, and it bounces. Is it out? Is it out? It does. So a flag. It, this is this is completely a full moon start. I've got no Brian on audio, and we have a kickoff that goes out of bounds to start the football game. So this is a full moon start. We are at Golden Valley High School, second Golden Valley game for us this season, 2010 high school football game of the week. Let me just give it to you again. Ow! We have been vexed by the full moon. First and 10, Golden Valley. Hey, they'll take starting at the 35, Matt. Oh, uh, 35 yard line, yeah, absolutely. That's good field position for Derek Martin, who's got 12 touchdowns through the air so far this season. He's thrown for 1,285 yards, Vance. We were here earlier in the year when they hosted North High School. They took a nap at halftime, came out, and were very lackadaisical against the Stars. The Stars marched down the field a couple of times, made it interesting, but then the talent of Golden Valley came back in motion of course jacob wiseman here comes the handoff they start by going right up the middle of the football field and he's brought down at the 39 yard line dare i ask if we have brian again not yet all right all right all right bright house networks high school football game of the week we are at golden valley a very sparse crowd even for the home side the home school maybe has 200 people in the stands Hand off up the middle. The ball gets to about the 45 yard line, and uh, ironically. Hello. If you look over at the West High School crowd, they have about as much as the home school. So maybe it's the chilly weather that's coming in. Maybe, uh, I'm not quite sure, but very, very low attendance tonight. Oh, this is football weather, Vance. You gotta love this. I'm, I'm perplexed. I'm flummoxed. Oh, a big stop. At the line of scrimmage, and Justin Blue, the first player in there, six, uh, five foot, five foot. That can't be right. I don't think that's right, man. Six foot, 260. He can't be five feet tall. And that brings up a fourth and one. Matt, what are they going to do? Now, you know, I think they're going to stay on the ground with Palacios. They seem to have, uh, you know, even after that last play where they weren't able to get it going up the middle, I think they'll still try to work something up the middle here with Palacios. West High Viking defense, early test. Wiseman in motion. They go up the middle and they do pick up the one yard needed first down, Golden Valley. Well, you can't leave Palacios out of the equation here, Vance. He comes in with 611 yards, 12 TDs rushing on the ground. So Golden Valley has many threats on offense. And then of course you can't forget their receiver, Chris Brown. First and 10, they go to the air, they loft it out there, and it's caught! Wiseman with a catch at the 30. At the 24, he gets pushed out of bounds. What a nice pass. A beautiful pass out there. By Martin. Nice little pitch and catch. Well, you see here on our Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay, Martin has plenty of time in the pocket and then just fires over the outside shoulder of Wiseman. That's a perfect, picture-perfect pass if you're a quarterback. Sure was. Sure was. 
First and 10, just underway. Wiseman in motion again. This time they go up the middle, the handoff. And it's a, he's still on his feet. He's not down yet. What a nice well, run by Kwame Johnson. So here come the Bulldogs of Golden Valley. They are not messing around. Well, one thing about the West High Vikings is their defense is giving up an average of 37.7 points a game, Van. So, you know, this could be a shootout tonight. Well, that was expected coming into tonight. I was driving over here thinking, you know what, this ball is going to be in the air quite a bit. And we ask, and it is delivered. Wiseman catches it. Delivers a shoulder pad. We're still waiting to get our captain involved in the broadcast. He's, he's been vexed by my full moon introduction. And you see here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay, Wiseman just catching that little out pass, little, little route in the slot. And he's able to pick up a good couple of yards and a first down, a fresh set of downs here for Golden Valley. Wow. Just underway, first quarter. And there's the handoff to Palacios. Palacios kicks to the outside, looking for the end zone. Cuts back up, and he's finally brought down. A nice piece of running. Fumble! Oh, that ball went on the ground, and they picked it up. That sure did, Vance. You see Palacios, what I like about that play is that he saw the hole was closed up, so he cut it to the outside, and he was able to pick up a good bit of yards after, you know, it looked like he wasn't going to go for much. Almost lost the football here in our AV play. Uh, there that ball goes on the ground and it's loose right there. Look at that shot. And while we were away at replay, it didn't take long. Golden Valley touchdown. So touchdown Golden Valley, no huddle offense. They went to the line of scrimmage. They didn't wait. You know, Matt, that's pretty smart. They just, you know, the West High defense reeling from that long Palacios run, trying to regroup. Golden Valley gets to the line of scrimmage. Pow, punches it in. Touchdown Bulldogs, just like that. And we've seen the big left footer of Joseph Samora. Is that Joseph Samora? Or no, that's Cesar Reese. So Cesar Reese. Check. Knocks it through. 7 nothing, Golden Valley. And you know, West West was put on a, their weak defense, per se, was put on display there. As you saw, Golden Valley just marched down the field. There was maybe only one or two plays out of that whole drive that went backwards for Golden Valley. So let's see how West offense responds. And you know, speaking of West offense, they have a great quarterback themselves in Scout, Scout Villanueva, who's fourth in Kern County in terms of passing average. He's thrown for 1,163 yards, 10 touchdowns, and they have the biggest receiving threat in the county in Fred Wilson, the senior, who's caught five touchdowns for 627 yards, Vance. Yeah, Fred is, I'm looking forward to seeing that West High offense. Could shape up to be a very Great nice football game tonight, Matt. There's, Matt, there's a lot of storylines offensively, but Golden Valley answers the bell right off of the start of that first kickoff. They just started at the 35 with an out of bounds kickoff. They marched down the field a big uh, couple of pass, couple of big pass plays that put them in uh, position to score, and they did it. And now they will kick off with a 7 0 lead. 8.41 left in the first. It's a low burner. Probably will take a football bounce, and it does. <laughs> oh, a lot of big hitting out there. You can hear it on our on field camera microphone. Oh boy. So the first and down with 25. Do we have our captain? Are you there, Brian? I think I'm here, guys. Who's that guy walking yeah. right by you? Who is that man? You know he's the man. He's been there. He's on this sideline for a long time, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wyatt Ross. Yes, sir. Is cruising by Brian Adams. Uh, my night started great. When I got here, it was close to the national anthem. And the first guy I saw was Wyatt Ross. You talk about iconic. Here we go. First down, West High School. First and 10, they go on the run. Matt, once again, give us some offensive uh, information about this team. Well, they don't really run the ball too much, but when they do, they go to their big man, Corey Friesen, the junior. He's got 110 yards per game, 443 rush, uh, rushing yards on the season. And right now they're rushing for 154 yards a game on the ground, but look for them to go to the air tonight, Vance. Second and six, eight minutes left in the first quarter. Chad Grider, head coach of the Vikings. 
Drops back, looks, he's in trouble. Oh, thrown down for a big loss at the 16 yard line. Oh my goodness, that was Max Davis. We haven't called his name much, have we? <laughs> Boy, Max Davis getting in there, getting in there with great penetration. You see here on the Audiovisual Plus Instant Replay, being away, but just drops back in that shotgun, and he just runs out of time. Somebody missed their block on the outside. And that was number 45, Caesar Luna, on the right side of the formation. Seven and a half left in this first quarter. Billing away with a quarterback already a third and 15. What a challenge, his first uh, series. Low snap on the shotgun. Looks across the middle, and he's pulled down, and the West High coaching staff wants to know how in the world can Fred Wilson be dragged down middle field and no flag. That's what they want. Let's go, Reed. Let's go, Reed. Well, I'm wondering if that ball was catchable, Vance, and of course right. you could make the argument if he hadn't been tripped, it would have possibly been catchable. We see here being a wave of the throw on the audiovisual plus instant replay. Yeah, that's quite a bit over his head. All right, good I think call, he, Matt. he might have been tripped after the fact, but nonetheless, it's going to bring out the punting unit for West. So, three and out for the Vikings. And just like that, they have to punt. And deep for the Bulldogs, the dangerous Chris Brown. Here's a nice punt. Gets to about midfield, but takes a backward bounce. Oh, boy. So it'll be first and 10 for the Vikings, and they'll get it up at the 42, 43 yard line. Good evening, everybody. If you're just getting to your television, you're watching high school football game of the week. We're at Golden Valley, second time in a month. They're hosting the West High Vikings. So they've played two compass teams, North and West. I'm Vance Palm, joined by Matt Alvarez. Let's go down to our captain on the field, Brian Adams. A lot of talk tonight about quarterbacks, receivers. Quarterbacks, receivers almost makes sure that it's going to be a running back night. What do you think? Well, Vance, you know, one thing we know about West High, their defense has been porous, but they're going to throw the ball at some point. We see a throw right there, just a drop ball. Orange but the West High defenders are going to play a lot of man-to-man. -man. And you guys talked about Fred Wilson. He's one of those special Chris players. We haven't seen him this year. He's a dual threat on both sides of the ball. He's going to match up tonight with Chris Brown, who is the big play threat and the big receiver for the Golden Valley Bulldogs. So Chris Brown and Fred Wilson, two of the top receivers in the area, uh, as Brian and Matt have mentioned, should make for an exciting football game. 7.08 left here. Oh, big hit on a great fake by the quarterback, Martin. He has it. He looks like he might be going all the way, and he's brought down at about the eight-yard line. What a great ball fake. A couple of big hits on the line of scrimmage, and Derek Martin continues his assault on the football field. Well, this Golden Valley Bulldog squad is clicking on all cylinders right now, Vance. As you see here with just under seven minutes to go in this first quarter, Martin getting the call from his offensive coordinator coaching staff. The fans into it tonight. But you know, these are the two top receivers in the county. You know, Fred Wilson right now first in receiving yards and Chris Brown second in receiving yards. So you would expect them to go to the air a lot more, but that, we haven't seen much of that tonight. First and goal from the nine. And look at this, Palacios looks to get in, and uh-oh, that was awfully, awfully easy for Emory Palacios. Touchdown, Golden Valley. Well, Wes needs to regroup and in a hurry, Vance, or else this is going to get out of hand because Golden Valley has twice now just marched down the field at, at their will with ease, as you see here on the Audiovisual Plus Insta Replay. And some good forward. Good blocking by the wide receiver in the foreground, but Palacios, like you said, relatively easy. And it's 13 to love right now. Uh-oh. Reese lines it up, and uh-oh, hits the, hits the bar, no dice. 13 nothing. So it hits the upright, and falls straight down, and that means no PAT. I'm Vance Palm, joined by our main man, Matt Alvarez, up top, and down low, Brian Adams. We are at Golden Valley High School, a very, very low-attended football game. You can see every letter for the Golden Valley High School. You can see the GBHS in the stands. Well, I guess the S is taken up by the band over there. But oh, the band's always going to show up, Vance. You know that. That's Not a lot of people here tonight. That Golden Valley band. We had a great band last week over at Frontier High School. You gotta love the bands here in Kern County. A lot of nice football games tonight around the area. Liberty at Stockdale, Frontier at BHS, Garces at Highland, uh, Ridgeview and South, 
an interesting game. Foothill Miramonte, just to name a couple. <clears throat> but this one, and 6.54 in the first quarter remaining. 13 nothing Golden Valley, and Chris Brown, the talented receiver, also handles the kickoff duties, kicking from the 40-yard line. The West High School needs to get something going here. It's gonna be a deep kick, taken at the three-yard line. Gonna be handled by Pollard. Pollard looking for some room, still on his feet. Takes a couple hits, doesn't go down yet. The first down from about the 24-yard line. Well, like you said, Vance, West needs to get something going and in a hurry. You know what, but they have the quarterback to do it with Scout Villanueva. Like I said, he's thrown 10 touchdowns, but one knack to his game is he's thrown 10 touchdowns, he's also thrown 10 interceptions. Brian, any uh, any ideas how to get this uh, thing kick-started? Well, you know, Vance, one thing is you got two good receivers in Dunn and Wilson. You have to figure out a way to get them the ball, but you got to keep this defense honest. One thing about Golden Valley, they are going to come and bring some pressure on you, and they know that the quarterback's no 10 interception, so they want to get that pressure, and they're locking up man-to-man. -man. There's a draw play right there. Found some room to run, but, you know, they got to stay patient, though. They can't just abandon every, whatever their game plan is offensively. They have been able to score points. So just stick with it and just know they're going to get in the shootout and hope for some turnovers. Right, right, right. Friesen gets six yards, so it's a nice draw play, as Brian mentioned. So you know, that's a good way to try to keep them honest, keep them on their heels, just try to you know, make something happen to where we can open up an opportunity for those uh, West High receivers. Right now it's 13 nothing. Golden Valley, early commanding lead out here. On the way with a quarterback behind center. They go to the run again. It's a tough couple of yards out there for Friesen. Does he get the first? No, he doesn't. It's going to be third in inches for a first down. Do well, you think they're going to go to the run once again, Vance? That's uh, obviously your first inclination because that's what they've done in this drive so far, and Friesen's been able to gain positive yardage each time. Keep that Golden Valley offense off of the field, I'm sure, is on their minds as well. Chew up some clock. Or keep their defense off the field because, <laughs> boy, I'm sure they're tired right now. That's a nice call right there. By the way, Villanueva, he's not a small guy. He's 6'1", 185 pounds. Nice uh, big guy to run behind, get a first down, and keep that clock going. Now they picked up the first down, like you said, Vance, as we near the five and a half minute mark here in the first quarter. You know, West, trying to get something started, like you said, and you know, Scout Villanueva, <laughs> the senior leader on this team. I look down at head coach Grider, he's looking at his players like, come on now, get those hands clapping. We just picked up the first down. Come on, fellas. Let's show some, let's show some uh, life over here. We're all right, we're at midfield. Well, 40 yard line, first and 10. And uh, look at this. Golden Valley, I think that that's gonna be encroachment. They're gonna be offsides, I think. Now we'll get the call here from the Head referee Joe Nunez as he turns to face the scoreboard. No referee mic tonight, Vance, and you were right. Offsides on Golden Valley. So that'll help. A little here, a little there. You get the feeling, Brian, they're going to break something. Something's going to happen. Well, they, they've done it all year long. They're, they're able to make plays, and, and I think Matt said it best, what play are they going to make? Right. They can throw 10 touchdowns. They can also give up 10 interceptions. So. What plays are they going to make? If they cannot turn the ball over and get it to their playmakers, they got plenty of time in this game to make, it, uh, make this a game. Howington and Dunn out to the left side. Wilkerson looks like he's going to blitz. He pulls back, so they stay on the ground. And uh, could be a late hit. No flag. Everybody wants it. Oh, boy. Coaching staff for West High School all over that side judge. They thought they were going to get a late hit. What do you think, Matt? That's two flags that... Could have possibly been called. Let's see. Boom. Oh, yeah. That's a, absolutely oh, a late hit right boy. there on number 35, Adrian Orozco for Golden Valley. Yeesh. So the West High coaching staff had a valid point there. And that's, as I was saying, that's two flags now that they think they should have, that they think should have been called, you know, with that pass interference earlier, or that assumed pass interference. Second and one, and they stay on the ground. First down, so the Vikings doing their job right now. They're just picking up some yardage as they go. You know, Brian, with all of the discussion taking place at the highest level of American football right now with these, you know, helmet to helmet hits and all the hubbub going on right now in the NFL about, um, you know, defenseless players. Boy, that was one right there. 
Well, you know, Vance, I mean, one thing is when a guy's on the ground, that's an obvious one. But during the game, a lot of things come into play. If a guy on offense kind of moves down and you're already started your descent or sent to hit somebody, sometimes right. you get helmet to helmet. So I don't know if all of it was malicious, but we'll see what West High can do in this first down. Dunn being manned up by Brown out here, and they uh, they go for a hard count. They may have had some Golden Valley Boy, Bulldogs jumping right off, side. but well, what a nice matchup three. taking place right in front of our captain, Brian Adams, with Chris Brown and Michael Dunn. They are at the line of scrimmage, face mask to face mask. <laughs> Who's going to win that battle? We'll see. We'll see. You know what, Brian? I agree with you uh, in, in every every sense of that because there are so many factors in the in the National Football League or at any level of football that can dictate whether or not a hit is deemed legal or not. But nonetheless, it's football. You're going to get hit. And I just, man, that's some, some weird rules Bill there. Villanueva gets some time, gets some protection, goes out to the right side. He was looking for Howington. Incomplete, but nice, nice route. Just very well defended out there. Nice job by Gruber. Oh, the West, the West coaching staff again is giving it to that side judge down there. They're thinking that Golden Valley's jumping offside. Well, they're very close. Every play, yeah, it's it's definitely close. As you see there in our audio visual plus instant replay, the pass goes over the head of the intended receiver there, Javon Howington, and it's going to bring up a third down. So here's a here's a big play for West. Well, we have. Super, is Super Sammy here tonight? Super Sampson, Golden Valley Bulldog. And we have Kevin Willie, a cameraman for West. Both of them chirping in my ear how illegal the other team is right now. And the pass is overthrown, intended for Fred Wilson, and that could have set up for a nice yards after the catch play, but it doesn't happen. Our cameraman, Kevin Willie, stating, in fact, Golden Valley is over the line. They're off sides, and Super Sammy Bowman saying, no, they're not. So maybe there'll be a fight at halftime. Well, the AV Plus instant replay, you saw Fred Wilson just off his fingertips. And so fourth and six right here on the Golden Valley 43-yard line. You, you, you never know. You never know. Will they punt it? They've got the dangerous Chris Brown back there with Jordan Gruber. They go to the, they go to the boot. Nice, uh, nice punt, and it rolls into the end zone. So that'll be first and 10 from the 20 yard line. Let's thank our sponsors right off the bat. We want to thank Premier Equipment Rentals for these great scissor lifts. Are you kidding me? We have the best seat in the house every single Friday night. Thank you for Premier Equipment Rentals, Lynn and everybody there. We appreciate that. How about Audio Visual Plus for our great replay? for all of your Audio Visual Plus needs, including the podium, that's Audio Visual Plus, and then our three great media sponsors, goodness gracious, Crab Radio, KHTY Fox Sports Radio 970, and of course, Dr. Todd Strain, KGET Friday Football Extra. Here we go, first and 10, 13 to nothing, Golden Valley. They click it out to the left side. This is Gruwal. Gruwal takes it. He picks up the first down on a first down. Oh, it's a nice play, Brian. We've seen this already with Golden Valley. It does not take them long to get it going. No, they don't. You know, one thing right now, fans, whatever they're calling is working. Right. You know, and that's a luxury when you're an officer play caller. You can start just picking plays and anything's going to work. But one thing that you're seeing, there's no penetration right now by the West High defense uh, front defense lineman. So they have to get some kind of penetration to disrupt this offense. Triples out to the right side, one running back behind Martin. Matt, what do you see? Oh, here you go with Fago Palacios up the middle once again, and he's stacked up, but he's able to get about nine yards. So this West High, and there's a late flag on the play, and three referees saw that. And, you know, Fred Wilson's clapping his hands here over here on the near sideline. And I think someone's going to get ejected here, it looks Are like, Vance. Are you kidding me? The ball, personal foul against the Bulldogs. And, Brian, remember we were talking with Golden Valley's coaching staff Look earlier. Look at the official. I wonder if we have that on replay, what, if we could see what happened. Golden Valley is already down a man. De DeAndre Stallworth was ejected last week, He's their star the cornerback. Game. Chris Brown's Chris gone now, fellas. He's oh. out of the football game. So Golden Valley's biggest offensive threat and definitely a big defensive threat now on the sidelines for the remainder of this game. Oh my goodness. That's now two 
absolute impact players that have been sidelined because of – and he has to miss next game too, Brian, right? Yep. So well, he won't play next week either. Kern County, I can tell you this. We didn't see it happen, but we saw four flags fly. I, it was so obviously a majority of the officials, four out of the five, all saw something. The flags flew, and all of the coaching staff did the old thumbs like he's out of here. Goodness gracious, Chris Brown ejected. What a turn of events, Vance. And what's going to happen now with us ignite? Fumble. Fumble! Just like that. What a huge hit by Kari Finch, the linebacker for West High. He jarred that ball loose after it looked like Gruwal was headed to the ground. You see here, Gruwal catches the ball, and then as he's being pulled down, right there. Boom. What a huge hit by Finch that jars the ball loose. And who jumped on the winning lottery ticket for West? First and 10 West High Vikings. A dramatic turn of events at Golden Valley High School. Oh boy, I formation. And they go right up the gut. First down, West High School. Nice carry out there by Corey Friesen. Boy, this West High Vikings sideline is absolutely pumped right now, Vance. They've Got the turnover they needed, and they're deep in enemy territory. They have two of Golden Valley's best players sidelined now. I wanted to mention that number uh, 21, DeAndre Stallworth, one of their best cornerbacks, is out of the game because he threw a punch last week at Garces. Oh, goodness. I formation for the Vikings. And now West High School is going to take advantage of it. Another nice big run by Friesen. Well, Brian. We haven't seen a lot of that in 13 years. No, we, we haven't, Vance. You know, I mean, one thing we talked about last time against North High, their composure. You have to play this game with composure. I don't care about being on the edge. There's a, there's a point you go to and you can't cross that line. You have to stay on that edge of being aggressive, but you have to have some sense, too, to your, to your game and not lose composure and get kicked out of a game like that. Well, that was a great anticipatory read by Brian Wilkerson. As Brian Adams was talking, Wilkerson read that and timed it perfectly. He came across the line of scrimmage immediately after the snap. Oh, what a perfect angle on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay. Great work, guys. But Yeah, you see that he was in there at the snap going full speed, able to make a big play here as we're under a minute left to go in the first quarter. Oh, it's all happening tonight on our full moon football edition of high school football game of the week. Moonweva looks, wants to go to the end zone, goes to the corner, a lot of activity down there. No call at all, ooh boy. But there is one out in the middle of the football field. Matt, what do you think? It's definitely roughing the passer and it's gonna go against number 48, Max Davis. He got in there late on Scott, Scout Villanueva and that's what it is. Definitely gonna be a personal foul call as you see here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay. Watch Davis come in there. Boom. Oh my goodness. Right oh. in the back, and the referee was all over that as that ball was thrown out of bounds. Well, so no call in the corner. What did you see in the corner, Brian? Nothing? Well, Vance, one of the things, when you got a guy 6'3", you got to give him an opportunity to catch the ball. Don't right. throw the ball out of bounds. Right, right, right. You know, you want to let him go up and get it. So now all of a sudden, it's first and goal from the 10 yard line. The markers are down, so it's gonna be first and goal from the 10 yard line. Now West High School with a enormous boost on their sidelines. Don't the wave has an eye formation. Friesen right behind Luna. Let's see if he tries to change his cadence up just a hair as they send English in motion. Right up the middle is going to be freezing. He gets five yards, a nice carry. Boy, there's a lot of movement on both sides of the line before that ball snap, Vance. I don't know if, you, I don't know if you're seeing the same game I am, but there is a, absolutely a lot of movement going on down there as you see a West High Viking now down yeah, on the play right at the... Uh, Richardo Castellon, he looks like he's down. And they stopped the clock, an official's timeout with 17-7 left in this first quarter. Oh, you saw on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay. If we can get another shot of that, guys, you can see that Castellon, 
maybe got rolled up on from behind. Got his leg twisted up underneath all those bodies. You see here on the auto-visual plus his replay number 64 there on the left side of your screen in white. You see him blocking. Now he's in the middle of your screen back to the left side. And just watch, he gets rolled up on right there. Oh, his left knee just takes it. Wowee. So with 17.7 seconds left here in this first quarter, this game has just been a roller coaster of events in the first quarter. Second and goal from the five, and both teams are able to come over and have a quick chat with the sidelines. And this is a pretty serious injury here, we feel. And now it looks like the coaching staff is going to ask for some players to come over and uh, pick him up as we see Brandon McVie and uh, Christian Reeves. Oh, boy, good, good, good to see. Great to see. Who was his right leg? Like so the big a, fella. Maybe a knee or an ankle injury. But nonetheless, that's, that could be big, Vance, because he's one of the stalwarts of their offensive line. Big six foot two, 225 pounder. And they've been able to run the ball now. So let's see if they uh, maybe have to switch up their offensive play calling. Well, the clock starts. No, really no rush to get the play off. It's 10 seconds left in the first quarter. I formation, but they'll probably get it going. They pitch it out to Friesen. He might get in, does he? Oh, he runs into one of his own players and gets down to the one inch line. That'll do it for the first quarter. Don't go anywhere. High school football game of the week promises, promises drama in the second quarter. Back in a moment. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970 with Dan Patrick in the morning and Jim Rome 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports, it's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. Back here for the start of the second quarter. 12 fresh minutes on the clock, and West going in for the touchdown is Scout Villanueva. And West gets on the board in the first play of the second quarter here, Vance. What an interesting, interesting first quarter, Matt, was we, you know, it, 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 the Bulldogs score so quickly twice. We said, uh oh, here we go, here we go. But West, calm, poised. Started digging it out, started grinding out a nice series, a nice possession. They started marching the football down the field. Thought, all right, they're chewing up the clock. Then they ran out of downs, couldn't do it, had to punt the football. And then, oh, a serious blow to the confidence of the Golden Valley offense with the ejection of one Chris Brown. We already have one Golden Valley player ejected from last week's altercation. And then West High School recovers a fumble that they cause, next thing you know, look at this, the Bright House football is being thrown out by the Golden Valley Bulldog shooters. Get a close up on one of those footballs. Get a close up on one of those footballs. The Bright House football is being tossed into the selective audience. Wow. Look at those. They're gone. Those are probably the hottest commodity in the uh, southeast part of town tonight. Look at that. 
Bright House football. Well, Brian, nice job by this West High offense to not waste that opportunity. They punched it in and got it. Well, Vance, they just sucked it up and just said, we're coming right at you, and they fired right off the, up the middle mostly on those runs. But, you know, one thing, too, with Chris Brown going out, he's also, he does the kickoff, right. and he's their punter. So, oh, you know, boy. So special teams will definitely be affected, and a game that's looks like it's going to be a, a back-and-forth type of game, that could be huge tonight. And, Brian, you look at that sideline. That's a thin sideline already. There are not a lot of bodies over there. Exactly right, man. We're just underway in the second quarter. I'm Vance Palm, joined as always by our captain, Brian Adams, down on the grass. Matt Alvarez up on top of the Premier Equipment Rentals with myself. Matt sporting the BC football jacket. Oh, yeah. Tonight, here's the kickoff in this West High School. Sidelines, cheerleaders, players, everybody's got just a new boost of energy. Here's the kickoff. And brought down at about the 22-23 yard line. You know what, Matt? A start like this tonight also gets our Kern County officials, kind of gets them on edge. Now all of a sudden they've got to start, you know, now you never know what their game's like. Go ahead. Yeah, we got our officials tonight. Referee, head referee, he's made his presence felt already with that ejection, Joe Nunez. The umpire, Jeff Rothermal, the line judge, Brian Smith. The headlinesman, Jesse Esparza. The back judge, Randy Merriman. And in the box, Randy Pig. All members of the Kern County Official Association doing a great job week in and week out. They got an ejection in the first quarter, so Absolutely. now all of a sudden they're under the spotlight. Here we go. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. How do they respond? Martin looks to his left. Martin brought down and sacked. And he had Palacios right there trying to do some blocking in the backfield. What a play. And it was Chris Yeager, the junior, six foot, 190 pounds. And you see the Golden Valley sideline looks dejected right now, Vance. And the West High sideline is amped up, as you see here on the audiovisual plus insta replay. What a job by Yeager to get around that block. Oh, man. This, this game has totally shifted momentum, Vance. That's an early nomination for the Crab Crush. Mark. Fires one out to the left side. What a nice pass. That's how you get your team back in a consistent groove of what you know. Just fire that ball out there and get those Bulldogs going again. Well, they have a great leader to do it in Derek Martin, 6'3", senior. But, you know, right now it brings up a big third down. You see here on the audio-visual plus instant replay, Martin just fires it in there and a good job of coming down with the ball by Alex Hooper. And it's going to be a more manageable third down. Yeah, third and seven, I don't know. Here comes everybody for the Vikings. Martin on the run. Martin thrown down, and I mean thrown down hard. Dion West. And Dion West is a captain on this West High team, Brian. And you know, guys, right there, that's just great coverage. Nobody to throw to. And look at the pursuit of two defensive linemen. They're aggressive on Martin. They give him nowhere to run. And then they just throw him down like a rag doll. That's like, look like Kobe taking his sister's doll right there and just throwing it across the room. Man, oh man, what a change in the span of a minute this football game has experienced. And don't kid yourself, everybody. Golden Valley, a very good football team, but they have two of their top players off the lineup right now. And now a horrible kick to go along with it. That's, Der that's Derek Martin, the quarterback, was punting. So now Derek Martin, Brian, as you say, now he's got a punt. Well, that's what we talked about a little while ago, Vance, that now your punter's gone. And one thing we have seen with Chris Brown, he does punt the ball halfway decent for a high school kid who does who's a, uh, really a receiver defensive back guy. But now that punt gets you short yardage. So West High is going to take advantage of maybe going, I can't see from here, about 35 yards. So. West High is, is marching, and with a touchdown and an extra point, the 22-yard line is on a oh, 22-yard line. I'm sorry, and therefore, you know, they're definitely in the red zone, and they should put some pressure on, on the Golden Valley right now. Here we go. Villanueva hands off. Friesen takes the burden of it. He gets down to about the well, he, he was at the 17, then he gets pushed back to the 20th. Well, the coaching staff for Golden Valley, head coach Eric Smith right now, I, I watched over there, I looked over there during that change of possession and that bad punt by the quarterback, and he was bent over, 
hands on his knees, just not happy. Second and seven. Right behind the snap, right behind the quarterback. And they get it out to the left side. Oh, what a nice move out there by Michael Dunn. Dunn gets to the end zone, and it's a touchdown. He's a playmaker, fellas. At 6'3", 220, he went to a passing league this summer and just turned it out. He was ranked the number one receiver from that passing league down south. So you want to get in the playmaker's hands, and that's what he just did just now. And 13-13, and West High has a kicker, so I'm going to expect this to go through the uprights and be 14-13 West. Tell us about that passing uh, camp. Well, they went to a passing tournament, I was being told, on the sideline where they played against some Southern California kids, and he did real well and basically was scoring about three touchdowns a game in the passing tournament. Michael Dunn is six foot three, 220 pound senior. Wow, here comes the PAT. We got a whistle before the play. Let's see here is head referee Joe Nunez looks up towards the press box and gives his signal. And it's another offsides penalty, Vance. So undisciplined Golden Valley right now about to lose lose their lead. It's already tied right now with under nine minutes to go, but they're about to find themselves down on their home field after leading this game 14 or 13 nothing at one point. Well, well, well. High snap, nice job, and it's through to through. So 14 to 13 the score. Brian, what's happening? You know, you, you look over there and you see him pacing the sideline. Eric over there, he's got the hat and the shorts on right there. He's pacing back and forth around the quarterback. You know, and right now he's just trying to figure out what, what's going on with his team. They lost their composure right there. And you see Chris Brown in that shot. Uh, there's a shot of the head coach right there, and he's just um, trying to trying to put together something here with a major swing of momentum, emotion. Oh boy! Matt walk us through the ejections of the last two weeks, last week and this week. Well, last week I was told that DeAndre Stallworth, uh, Corey Costello actually told me that DeAndre Stallworth was ejected for throwing a punch during the Garces game, a game which Golden Valley lost 41 to 49 at Garces. So he was out for the rest of for the remainder of that game and he's also out for this game per the high school rules. So he's on the sidelines over there with his uh, in street clothes but with his jersey on number 21 on the far sidelines. But now Chris Brown, uh, you know, you you have to think that a punch was thrown over here because as soon as you saw Fred Wilson playing cornerback for West High and Chris Brown was the one who it looked like he possibly threw a punch and Chris and you know Wilson was clapping his hands. Yeah, he did he did throw a punch. It was it was uh, right after the pushing and shoving. Two two hands, four hands the football gets through. It's uh, it's almost like this weird hex now of the football rolling through two players for Golden Valley. I don't I mean start oh. It's starting to snowball here, Vance, that's for sure. It's starting to snowball on Golden Valley sidelines. As you see, what did you call Vance? The quintessential football bounce, and it evades Jordan Gruber, and he just falls on it. He says, enough of this. I'm falling on it at the five-yard line. It's better to oh boy. It's better to just fall on your losses there. Full moon football at Golden Valley. 10-22, 2010, full moon. Golden Valley going to try to settle things down here and chew up some clock, just pound it, keep it on the ground, try to get back to basics. Well, Vance, the first two series, they ran the ball very well. Right. And they were able to pound it on West High. But you're talking about full moon. Well, West High definitely has been like a wolf man because they, the, first, the first two series on defense, there was no bite, no bark, nothing to them. And all of a sudden, they've gotten a little nasty since, since the Chris Brown ejection. A big hit with a turnover and then a couple of sacks. So let's see what they do on this series. How about Mustafa Cobb in there? And here's, oh, it's an interception. It bounces off the shoulder pad of a Golden Valley Bulldog. And look at this. You have got to be thinking that there's a hex on. There's a hex. It's starting to snowball, and boy, it's just turned into a blizzard for Golden Valley right now. 
And this West sideline, they have been pumped up. And you know what? Everything turned. Everything turned after the ejection to Chris Brown. And you've got to think, you see here on the Audio Visual Plus Insta Replay, it's a good throw. It's a great throw, and that should be brought down by Charles Fair, but it bounces straight up in the air off the face mask, and it, Christian Reeves pulls it down for West High. First and goal from the two-yard line. Oh, man. Bill Nueva hands the ball off to Friesen. He's trying to take it in. Nice play. Fumble! Oh, they're going to say it's on the ground. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, that would be a heartbreaker for West right there, a chance to put another nail uh, you know, and one thing, guys, that you guys allude to on the si on the on the sideline is you talked about Coach Grider when they were down 13 nothing. He was talking to his right. players about staying up, clapping hands, and that's what you have to do in a game. You can never give up in the first quarter, and they haven't. And look at the turnaround for him. The only way with the quarterback right behind center, eye formation. Second goal from the one. Friesen takes it, and he just walks in. <laughs> West High School, 20 unanswered points. I mean, you look at the Golden Valley sideline, guys. This, this, this is not a group of guys right now that is interested in fighting. And somebody on that team, the quarterback, a linebacker, a lineman, somebody's got to go over there and say, hey, guys, it's no big deal. It's only 20, 21, 13, and we have two and a half quarters left. A lot you of football. You can't sit on the sideline like that. You have to get up, you have to stay in the game and fight. You cannot give up if you're a Golden Valley Bulldog. Brian, that, that's such a great point. They were up 13 nothing, and West High decided not to die. Now they're down seven, eight. They can't decide to die. Oh my goodness, what a football game. I'm Bright House Network's High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Vance Palm, joined by Matt Alvarez up top. We're about 50 feet up on a Premier Equipment Rental. Brian's down on the grass, and you, I, I, I mean, come on, you, you go into some games knowing what to expect, what you're going to see. We thought for sure, it's quarterbacks, receivers, it's going to be an air game. It's, you know, that's how it's going to be. Who'd have thought all oh, this was going to take place? You know, Vance, you never can tell what's going to happen on any, like say, any given Friday night or, or, or any night somebody's going to play football or any sport for that fact. But you know, one thing that, that this is where all your pre preparation throughout the week comes into play. You know, Matt, you get a playbook, you get, you know, all the tendencies, you know things about this team. This is where if I'm Golden Valley, they give up 37 points a game. I'm not worried about this. Right, you right. Know, I'm not going to worry about being down 21-13 when they give up 37. In my mind, we still can score 24 more. You see here West lining up to kick the football. No Chris Brown deep again. He's been ejected, as we've said, a couple times. And a little squibber. Takes another big hop, and it's taken at the 10-yard line, and he's got a lot of room. Palacios able to break a tackle. Palacios cuts to the outside at the 50. He's got blockers. Palacios might be caught from behind, and he is, but he gets all the way down to the 35, the 25-yard line, and it was Sylvester Pollard who brought him down. Well, Brian, you say it, and it happens. It just takes one player to believe, and right there, Palacios just willed himself. He could have been tackled right in the gap when he made some cutbacks right in front of some West High players, but he ran through a couple tackles, then he hits the sideline, and again, if it wasn't for a game saving, a touchdown saving tackle right there, it's gonna be now, what, 1921. So Golden Valley is right back in it. Now, let's see how they come out. Are they coming out like they really wanna score? Because West High is gonna fight. First and 10. Golden Valley, right behind the quarterback. They send Fair in motion. Fair gets the handoff. Fair, cuts back to the left side, cuts up field. Fumble! Unbelievable. You see here on the Audio Visual Plus Insta Replay, Fair gets the ball, he's turned back inside, great defensive pursuit. And then the ball was stripped by Mustafa Cobb, and who jumped on it? We know West High jumped on it. It was Christian Reeves, the same guy who had the interception on the other side of the field, Vance. 
First and 10, 7.05 left in the second quarter. The Vikings now have the football. One play from the line of scrimmage for Golden Valley, and they cough the football up. And now here comes Friesen, and he gets the first down. Well, Cap, I have to go down to you. You've played in some very big football games, high school for BHS. You played for the UCLA Bruins. Who's going to weather the left and the right and the left and the right? Well, I just said, Vance, the West High is going to fight, and right there they just showed on defense. Right. They didn't worry about the big return. They came back. You didn't see any of the kids dejected on the return. They're just right now taking the fight to the Bulldogs. They're just having more willpower, and somebody in that blue and gold has to step up. What a football game. First and ten. They stay on the ground. A flag. A punch I was thrown. Another a punch wow. was thrown in the gut. It looked like it looked like number George, 60. Was it 60? It looked like it? it was 60 for Golden Valley. And if that was another punch thrown, Vance, that could be another ejection if that was another punch thrown. Out of the game. Out of the game. Pedro Navares. Pedro Navieras thrown out of the game. Unbelievable, Vance. Golden Valley just losing all their discipline here. As you see here, Friesen able to cut it to the outside. And at the end of the play, let's see if we could see if it was indeed number 60. Boom! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No need for that whatsoever. Oh, my goodness. 15 yards. Absolutely undisciplined play by Golden Valley right now. It begs, it begs explaining. I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know if he was. I, I want to wish. I want to hope he was trying to strip the ball. Yeah, you know, I mean we've been doing this for quite a while, Vance. I don't think I've seen a team have three ejections in two games. So Coach Smith having to deal with a lot right now, and he calls a timeout. He wants to talk to his players. He has seen enough, he's had enough, and then he wants to talk to the Golden Valley Bulldogs. Uh, I would think that's where our camera's gonna focus I mean, in on because this is uh, really, really tough to watch. Bring the whole, at this point, bring your whole team up. At this point, you might as well bring everybody that has a blue and gold jersey and a gold helmet up and say, guys, we gotta settle down and play football. Don't worry about the officials. Don't worry about what West High is doing. Let's do what we do best. You know, yes, we were dejected from last week. That's last week. That game is dead and gone. You got to come out tonight and you got to play. And like I said, somebody has to make a decision they want to play. Somebody, it only takes one, guys. It only takes one player to make a decision he's going to play and he can get the other guys around him. Brian, play. you made a great point. He only brought the defensive side over there. Uh, all the other Bulldogs dejected on the sidelines. A lot of them sitting on the bench. They're not even up. They're not even, uh, they're just down on the bench. If they're on offense, they can't be tired. They only played about, they only done about nine, ten plays this whole uh, second quarter. So they can't be tired. You know, this is again, is this is where your senior leadership has to come into play, fellas. The seniors have to get these other guys up and say, hey, we got to root for this defense. Look at the West High players. They're not on the bench. They're in the game rooting for their teammates. They go to the right side. It's going to be Friesen. Friesen tries to get outside, and he is going to pick up a first down. He does. And now we have a West High School player at midfield, and he is down. And this is Jose Sanabria. So he's, you know, at least he, he's attempted to get back up, so... Nonetheless, Friesen able to pick up some good yardage in a first down here for West High. And boy, all the momentum, all the momentum since that ejection to Chris Brown is just is on the shoulders of the West High Vikings right now. And obviously you can see the frustration and the dejection starting to mount up for Golden Valley. Well, the, 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 the first play after the ejection was a fumble. And so it was almost... You know, it's almost, almost like the football gods. Almost celestial. <laughs> yeah. Because they had a fumble right away, and then West High scores. But you think, okay, I mean, you know, okay, that happens. It's going to be all right. But it just continues to take this dastardly turn for the Bulldogs. It hasn't stopped. Oh, you're exactly right, Vance. It just seems like everything lined up for them after that. And, it, and it's like those, when you remember your kid, you stack the dominoes up because you don't really know how to play yet, and you just push them and knock them all down. 
That's what it seems like has happened for West High. All the dominoes have just been a single knockdown right away. But again, the Golden Valley Bulldogs can, can still stay in this game and make a play of it. Well, you see Villanueva in the I formation with 622 remaining in the first half. Villanueva drops back to pass. He pump fakes. He's got pressure. And he fumbles the football. Oh! And it's picked up by Golden Valley. Looks like number 14, Jones Leal, or 34 rather, Adrian Orozco. And oh, Villanueva's having some trouble getting up, Vance. He had his man, but you won't see it in this shot. It was a pump fake. A, he had his man deep, but no chance to deliver. The only delivering right there was that Golden Valley defense, so the timeout called might have worked. Like we said, oh, it takes one guy to make one play. Now, the Golden Valley offense has to take that momentum and do the same thing West High did. Fair in motion. The handoff stays on the ground. And here's a flag from the back judge. Uh, you saw Michael Dunn, the big 6'3 safety out there for West, motioning that it was against Golden Valley as Another pile of players. Boy, there's been a lot of masses of humanity on the field tonight, Vance, as we get the call from head referee Joe Nunez. And it is. It's going to be an illegal block in the back. It never ends. Oh, it's just undisciplined football. Well, for those of you that are just getting to your televisions, you're looking at the score saying 21-13 West. Wow, what a great football game. <laughs> if you only knew what a great football game it's been for so many different reasons, Golden Valley High School had a commanding 13-0 lead early in this first quarter. We're talking four or five minutes into it. They were up two touchdowns, and this PAT was their only flaw. And then late in the first quarter, their superstar, Chris Brown, ejected from the football game for dirty play. And since then, the Vikings have been all over it. But Golden Valley has had their moments trying to battle back. They had a long kickoff return brought down to the 20-yard line a few moments ago. Us three, we three thought, OK, they're back in it. Fumble! The next play, just like that, West High School. So the score is 21-13, 5.48 left in the first. There are no loss of opportunities for Brian and Matt and myself to talk about this first half. A lot of action. Now you see Derek Martin in the shotgun. He's got plenty of time, goes to the far side for Weissman. It's intercepted! What a pick by Fred Wilson! And he gets inside the 40-yard line. You, you got to know your personnel. You got to know who you're throwing to. He's the best athlete on the field right now. Right. He's not the guy you're going to go pick on, especially with a throw going across the field. You got to find somebody else to go after because he's an athlete. I mean, you're talking about he's a guy who's a Division One athlete. Talk about all the time. Here's a kid who's going to play Division One football somewhere. Where he plays, we don't know. But he will definitely play Division One football. Boy, that was shades of Charles Woodson at Michigan back there. What an amazing pick. Look how high he got off the ground, Vance. <laughs> I'm not laughing in any other way other than just amazement of what a football game this has been so far. Goodness. First and 10, West High School. I formation. Villanueva, nice to see him back in the lineup. He pitches the free set. Nice job by this Golden Valley defense. They do a nice job. <laughs> Oh my goodness, did you see that, Vance? That I sure did. That? I sure did. Oh. Who's on the ground there? That's jo Jose Santabria again, the same guy who was hurt a couple plays ago. And he took a, I don't know if I want to say, cheap shot from Orozco on the right side, but you see Friesen having to cut it back inside, and at the very end of the play, now we're not going to get it in this angle, Orozco, Adrian Orozco, the linebacker for Golden Valley, just took out the legs of Santa Bria, and the West High coaching staff was wanting a call there, but that was definitely unnecessary, Vance. 444 left in this second quarter, second and 13, so a loss of three on that play. Here come the Golden Valley Bulldog defense. Bill Nueva back, rushed out of the pocket. He's in trouble. He's going to be thrown down. And another there, They got flag. him now. He, Orozco put his forearm into the back of Santa Bria's head. That's exactly what happened, Vance, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was gone. So and the, things are getting away from the Golden Valley coaching staff. This is ridiculous right here, fellas. This is ridiculous. And it, it, this makes no sense at all. You can see it here at the end of the play. Right there. Oh, oh my, my gosh. What are you doing? 
That is absolutely unbelievable, unnecessary. All right, here's, here's, a, here's a shot for all the younger players out there of complete stupidity. Absolutely unbelievable, Vance. This is, this is turning into, this is a fiasco. And you have to hand it to these officials. They're getting it absolutely perfectly correct. They have not been overly officious. They have yeah. not been. Well, well Vance, these, these are just plain sight penalties right here. I mean, these aren't even, even close to being part of playing football. And let's give West High football players some credit. Not one of them has reacted at right. one time. Right. That's the difference between composure and playing under control and a team out of control. We saw this in the North High game when we did Golden Valley. Now, the thing with Golden Valley, they're so talented and athletic, they could be what we call maybe call a crackerjack team because you never know what you're going to get when you open the box with them. Well, what, they're, what we're getting tonight is a display of incredible unsportsmanlike conduct. And it's disappointing to see at this level. Absolutely. Absolutely unnecessary, Vance. And, you know, it's just a proponent of frustration on Golden Valley's side. And, and you can't characterize the entire team because you see guys like number 42, Jordan Webster, their big DN, trying to pump his team up right now, trying to let his team know that they're still in it, regardless of the unnecessary, horribly unsportsmanlike play by some of his teammates. Golden Valley is still in this game with 3.50 left to go here in the second quarter. High formation for Villanueva, second and five. They're at the 20 yard line of Golden Valley. Friesen takes the handoff, gets to the outside. Gonna try to get to the end zone. A nice touchdown safety tackle out there by Randy Romero. So Romero saves the TD, he would have been in. Wow. For those of you that are just getting to your televisions tonight, it's been a long Friday night for you. You're getting to the uh, screen, you're getting to your living room, your sports room, your kitchen, wherever you're at. This is high school football game of the week, 21 to 13. I have tried in all my years of local sports coverage to maybe not get too dramatic. I enjoy the dramatic, but I don't like to be a part of it. But this has been a horrific first half of football for Golden Valley High School when it comes to their composure and their sportsmanship. It's been bad. Three players ejected. Another one already on the sidelines for an ejection last week. All of them plain as day, plain as bright lights, right out in the middle. Brian, you make a great point. There's some things you can get away with in the puddle and the scrum. When there's a lot of guys around, you can get away with stuff. But when you're right in front of the official and you're throwing a huge elbow right in front of everybody, it's almost like, you know what, I want to get kicked out. I want out of this thing. You know, they're just not, they're just not playing with any kind of composure and, and thought in what they're doing. They're just out there just going wild. Tough to watch. Second and eight. They give it to Friesen. He's been the, uh, the workhorse on the ground here. Nice tackle again out there by Brian Wilkerson. So you're right, Matt, there are players out there that want to win this game from Golden Valley. They want to stay in this, baby. They want to work. They want to do some things. But boy, they're against the eight ball now. And it, their teammates are what's making it difficult on them, Vance. You know, they could have had some big stops here. And Wes's drive, this drive has been kept alive by two personal fouls. Now it's a third and seven inside the 15 yard line at the 11 for West. As you see here, Scout Villanueva in the I formation with two minutes left to go. In the second half, now a couple ticks under. He changes the play, changes the formation. He's going to run out of time here on the play clock. If he doesn't hurry up, he gets a snap off, fires far side, looking for the end zone. It's batted up in the air and a good bit of defensive coverage by Sean Gruel as the pass was intended for Michael Dunn, but it's incomplete. And that pass right there, guys, has to be much higher. It's a, you guys feel like you're the official doing a jump ball in basketball. If it's a jump ball, he wins it. Right. When it's low like that, even if you're trying to reach over, it gives a smaller defensive back a chance to knock it out of his hands. But you know, you did—you made a great point, Matt, about the, all the penalties keeping drives going. But let's give the defenders for Golden Valley who are still playing because they made a great stop right here. If they can come away with just a field goal, they got plenty of time in this game, even in this quarter, to do something. Reyes boots the field goal in, a 28-yarder, and West goes up 24 to 13. And you see Orozco ejected from this contest. He's out. Brown is out. Stallworth was out last week and had to sit out this week. 
So 24 to 13, an 11 point lead for West High School. So many salient points have been made by you two guys tonight. I can make some notes on this and watch it. And go back and look at the great points you guys have made. And one point that you made in, uh, earlier in this, Brian, is Chad Greider, son of Dallas Greider, cousin and nephew of all those Greider athletes. And he's got Wyatt Ross and his great coaching staff behind him. They haven't retaliated, one. And number two, it's all business still. They know how talented Golden Valley is. You know, the one thing about Golden Valley is they're not, they're not mi uh, missing athletes. You know, they, they're loaded with athletes as well as West High. But, you know, like I said, the one thing I'm impressed with is these guys have not retaliated and fired back. Now, there's some natural jostling and bumping that goes on during a game anyway during plays, and that's just part of what it is. Uh, but Golden Valley has settled down defensively. They really have only given up three points since, you know, ten points since the onslaught came back. But uh, give Golden Valley, the rest of the guys, the other, the other players outside of those three have played great football. Here's so we're only off. talking about three guys. This is an eight iron. It's going to be taken at the 21-yard uh, line. So an opportunity for Golden Valley. And, oh, great tackle out there. Nice job by the uh, – another Here flag. they go again. Here they go again. Oh, my goodness. Another flag and out this of should bounds. Be on, this should be on each team. This should be offsetting on this one. Well, what West needs to do is just come away from that sideline because they want no part of that whatsoever. They have they have this game in complete control right now. And it's funny. It's only an 11-point football game, but I agree with you. They do. We'll see the official call here and see if there is indeed another ejection. Let's see. Dead ball, personal foul, and it's on West. Okay, so West High takes the brunt of that one. And that could be big, Brian, because with a minute and a half left to right. go in the first half, that ball is going to be moved close to midfield for a, for a potent, well, not so potent lately, Golden Valley offense. And you're exactly right. And that one, West High got caught on it, but that could have easily, fellas, went to, it could have been offsetting because the two Golden Valley guys drove the West defender all the way out to the sideline by the medicine table and they both were kind of jostling each other and the West High guy threw him onto the track. But that could have been either one right there. All right, first and 10, buck 35 left in this first half. They go right at the middle with it on the ground. Fumble! I can't believe this. I cannot believe this, Brian. Well, you know, let's give the West High guys credit. They are going after that ball. They are being like piranhas on, in the, in, in, with blood in the water right now on defense. They have been after these guys every time. And Matt, you can take the replay. You see here on the Audio Visual Plus Instant Replay, Palacios has the ball ripped out by number 34. And that is the 34 for West High, Cameron Roberts. Hey, 90 seconds left in this first half for the Vikings. Tight end spot, Greg Bernal. He gets set, don't away, but stalls on the count, stalls on the cadence. They they pitch. Oh, they got a man wide open. Is he going to be caught? Oh my goodness! Stop running. He did. He stopped running, Brian. I saw that as well. Javon Howington was wide open for a sure reservations for six. Oh my goodness, they were going for the, the dagger in the heart there, Vance, as you see the reverse pass. And it wasn't a bad throw by Fred Wilson, but like we like Brian mentioned, Howington just stopped running about oh, halfway oh, through oh, his route. Oh, oh, Otherwise, oh, he would have been all the way to the house. Well, the head, the coaching staff said, well, we... Kick them while they're down, Vance. We had that one, lost that one, second and ten. Now they go to the air again. And this time it's overthrown to Michael Dunn. So obviously they're trying to make something happen here late. They want something. Well, if they don't get it, they're going to give Golden Valley another opportunity with plenty of time on the clock, Brian. You know, even though it's time on the clock, I like what they've done those last two plays. They're taking a chance to try to drive a nail in this coffin in the sure. second half and leave this game, leave this half on a high note. But, you know, right there, They've been off all night long on that pass play to, to uh, Dunn. Third and 10, 118 left. Matt says they're gonna leave him a lot of time if they don't get at least the first down here. Villanueva has been trying to change up his cadence a little bit. 
he's in big trouble. He gets out of trouble. He releases, he throws, and this one is almost picked off. Nearly picked off by Brian Wilkerson, and that'll bring up a fourth and 10. The Vikings probably will punt it. Well, you want to see quarterbacks get low. You see Scout Villanueva. Well, he got right on, he nearly got himself on the ground there trying to get away from Max Davis, the big DN for Golden Valley, but nonetheless, incomplete pass. Almost a dangerous pass there on the sidelines, but like you said, West in punt formation now as they have Jordan Gruber standing at his own 10 yard line. Michael Willis, or Michael Wills, <laughs> hearing the brunt of his coaching staff. Timeout, West timeout. High School. They didn't have everybody out there yet. They didn't like it. They called a timeout. I think we'll see timeout. some vociferous corrections here by this Viking coaching staff. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you, if you're West High, do not kick this ball to Gruber. He has potential to go 80, 90 yards on a return. Don't let him kick the momentum into the half on a big return. You can angle it to the sideline. Matt, you know more about that than I do, and try to put it inside the 20-yard line and make him go 80, 85 yards, but do not give him an opportunity to run this ball back. You know, before we go into half, guys, kind of the bigger picture in all this is where everybody thought Golden Valley would be at this stage of the season. Tough loss last week into Garces. Now they're hanging on by a string here as they go into halftime. You know, a one-two punch here in two weeks is certainly not what Golden Valley was, was expected. Well, you know, especially going into league play, this is their first league game tonight. This is West's second league game. West is already 1-0 in the right, South Yosemite right. League. And Golden Valley obviously looking to get started off on the right foot, but you know, you have to you have to look at the at, uh, the, the bigger picture. Obviously, you know, they've got to take care of business tonight, but in the bigger picture, they go to Miramonte next week, and Miramonte has a pretty good offense themselves. They're going to go down there shorthanded, down three men, Vance. They'll still beat Miramonte. <laughs> I hate to tell you that. Fourth and ten, high snap. And uh, they boot it up. They keep it away from Gruber. Or do they? Or do they? Oh, what that a good was bounce. bouncing right to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he wanted it. Well, a minute and one second left here in this first half. I'm Vance Palm. I'm joined by Matt Alvarez up top on the Premier Equipment Scissor Lift. Brian Adams is down on the grass. Matt, I've been listening to your morning reporting. And uh, been enjoying it. That very serious voice. <laughs> it's my news voice, fans. Matt Alvarez. Oh, yeah. Okay. Martin from the shotgun looks, has his man. Nice pass out there to Fair. But he stays in bounds. The clock continues to go. Oh, that was a good job by number one, Sylvester Pollard for West Hyatt on that outside, the near side, keeping the receiver fair in bounds. Then a good tackle by Mustafa Cobb as the clock starts to run again. Flag on the play. The minute the ball was snapped, there was a flag. Does not get out of bounds. It's complete out there for about five or six yards, but the clock will stop because of the penalty. Let's see what the call is. Now keep in mind that uh, it's an illegal motion call against Golden Valley. And keep in mind that Golden Valley has been having some trouble lining up on the lines tonight. They were called for a couple offsides earlier in this game. They seem to have shallowed up that problem, but once again, penalties and undisciplined, Vance. Well, we finally have a little bit of a chill for our first cool football game of the evening. Last week we're out at Frontier and it was 85 degrees out and a waft through the air of summertime. They go to the air and this is going to be incomplete. 38 seconds left and it's going to be second down. Full moon football here at Golden Valley. If you are out tonight, October 22nd, you will see the 10-22-2010 full moon and it's a beauty. Well, there was a different waft in the air uh, last time we were here at Golden Valley, Vance. It'll come, third quarter. Martin from the shotgun. Gets it out there, it's complete. What a nice pass out there to Wiseman. Flag on the play, though. I think it might be a hold out there on Sean Gruel over by the Golden Valley sidelines. He was holding up his man, Fred Wilson. Coach Smith just can't believe it. He's I wonder what his halftime speech is going to consist of. Yeah, be one of the more interesting ones. What could possibly be said? Try to sneak a camera in there. Well, uh, you know, there's 
that he's going to have to draw on some emotion. Whatever that emotion is going to, have to, is going to be, I don't know, but he's going to have to draw on some emotion. Will it be anger? Will it be fear of an 0 1 record going to the league? Will it be begging and pleading with his players to buckle up and get fired up for this? Your thoughts, Brian? You know, I mean, again, Vance, the, the, the thing is, you're only down 11. It's not like they're down 24 nothing. Right, but you I've know? never seen a team down 11 with just so much despondence on the sidelines. Here's a nice play right there. Let's see what happens here. Oh, a beautiful move out there, and it's Johnson. Block in the back, Vance. At the very end of the play, a block in the back by, we think, Alex Hooper. It is. He was talking with the back judge, it looks like, and they're conversing over here on the near sideline at the 50-yard line. Two referees saw that, so with 12.5 left to go, that's going to set them back about 15 yards from the spot of the foul, so that's going to go way back into Golden Valley territory once again, Vance, and unbelievable. Well, you know, this we talk about this every week, it seems like, to these receivers. There's no reason for a receiver to block on players that are behind your runner. Turn and go upfield, because if you might go upfield, you might b bust them loose for the big one. There's no reason to block behind the play if you're a receiver. Never, ever, ever. Well, this will be the last play of the half, and I think the coach is going to let it ride. He's not getting the play in soon enough. The players are pointing to the clock, and it's not going to happen. So that's it. They do not get the play off. 24 to 13 is the score of this football game. And two very, very different locker rooms are going to take place. I'm going to send Matt Alvarez upstairs to see if he can get some yardage on penalties and the calls. We'll be back with the third quarter high school football game of the week. What a doozy full moon football. Back in a moment. Got a job to do? Premier Equipment Rentals is your answer. Residential or industrial, we've got exactly what you need to get the job done. Whether it's a drill, trencher, bobcat, backhoe, or excavator, you can always count on Premier Equipment Rentals. And with our new extended hours, we're available when you need us. Check us out at 3217 Patton Way and 5001 Stein Road, or give us a call to find out more. Don't forget to ask about our weekend specials. Make your next project a breeze with Premier Equipment Rentals. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970 with Dan Patrick in the morning and Jim Rome 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports, it's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. Back everybody, Vance Palm alongside Matt Alvarez up top on the Premier Equipment Rental Scissor Lift and down low on the grass, Brian Adams. What a very interesting halftime that was. We'll try to get to some of the storylines at half that we experienced in a tumultuous first half of football. And the kick is up and it's taken at the six yard line and looking for some room and he's brought down about the 24 yard line, 23 yard line. A lot of hard hitting going on out there tonight as Pollard takes the football up to the 23-yard line. One thing that we've experienced tonight in this hard hitting is some extracurricular activity in this hard hitting. We've had three ejections uh, from the Golden Valley Bulldogs, and West High School has capitalized on them. It's 24 to 13. They have an 11-point lead, and they also get the football to start off this third quarter. First and 10, Vikings 
on their own 25. The quarterback is Scout Villanueva. I formation. And they go to the left side. It's Friesen. Friesen trying to get even further to the left side. Nice play out there. Jordan Gruber wraps him up. Brian, your thoughts about the first half in general? Well, Vance, it's just very uh, disjointed first half because of those penalties and ejections. But one thing that we did see is the, the character of a team, you know, for both teams. Let's give credit to the Golden Valley players that are still out there fighting. They were able to keep it to 11-point game. Let's give credit to the West High Vikings. They were down 13 nothing. They never quit believing, and here they are up 11. Second and eight. Villanueva looks at an aggressive Golden Valley defense. Friesen takes the football right at the middle. Looks like he might have picked up a first down. Matt Alvarez, your overall thoughts in the first half. Well, I was able to go to the press box during halftime, Vance, pick up some penalty numbers. Golden Valley's been penalized 10 times for 102 yards, along with those three ejections, Vance. West High was penalized one time for 10 yards in the first half. So obviously an extremely undisciplined Golden Half, Golden Valley football team in the first half, but we'll see if they can turn it around in the, in the uh, second half here, Vance. First and 10, they picked it up. Bill Nueva wants to go to the air. Flicks it out to the right side, and it's caught out there by Fred Wilson. And Wilson brought down after a first down. So they're starting to mix it up a little bit. Well, like you said, Vance, they are starting to mix it up, and that's their biggest weapon in Fred Wilson. You see here on the AV Plus Instant Replay, Wilson doing a good job of catching the ball and going to the outside. Puts the ball in his outside arm, picks up the first down. Right Would have liked midfield. to have been a fly on both walls, both locker rooms, to hear what these head coaches had to say to their football teams. First and down, first and 10. Midfield. Villanueva looks at a defense right in his dish. They go to Friesen. Friesen looks for some room. No wrapping up. Friesen looks to get to the outside. Oh, and goodness gracious, Sean Grewal. A big tackle, shoelace tackle. Oh, man. Go ahead, Brian. You know, guys, I'm telling you right now, Dunn and both Fred Wilson, who have done excellent jobs when they've had a chance to make some plays, but they both have had opportunity if they would have stayed on their block downfield, it could have been a big, bigger play for their running backs. Dunn split out to the left. Wilson split out to the right. Quarterback keeper, Villanueva gets the first down. Villanueva on the keeper. Well, another first down for this West High offense. Nate, Vance, like we talked about earlier, this game started off the wheels were turning for Golden Valley and nothing was go well, nothing was doing for the West High offense, but since that first ejection, West offense has just had all the wheels turning at the same time, and they have been motoring down the field, and they you know, started this drive back at, inside their 25-yard line, and there got the wheels going again. Luna, the fullback, freezing the halfback. They go to the air. Filling the way, but hit hard and brought down at the 45-yard line. We got more bodies falling over the pile afterwards. A lot of bodies hitting the ground Villanueva. tonight, Vance. Sack by Webster. See here on the audio visual plus instant replay, Villanueva looking for his receiver, the pump fake, but he just ran out of time there. And Lost big seven, tackle seven, by number 42, Jordan Webster. Second and 17 now. Just underway here in the third quarter. Vance Palm alongside Matt Alvarez, Brian Adams down on the grass. Very interesting football game. Friesen takes it, looks up the middle, and plows ahead and delivers the hit. Well, Friesen saw a hole there and he took it. He was going straight up the middle, looked like he might have been going to the right side of the line, all of a sudden saw a hole and cut it back to the left side. You see her on the AV Plus instant replay. Friesen with a big cut right there, and he's able to lower his shoulder, boom, Pow. and deliver a big hit to number 18, Kendall Banducci, the 5'8 junior. Friesen definitely got the better of that battle. Louis Cantu, the center for West High School, right in the middle of that offensive line that's opening up some big holes right now. And uh, as we mentioned his name, he holds onto the ball just a hair too long. <laughs> that was not meant to be, yeah, Louis. Ball. Sorry, bud. Well, that's only gonna be the second penalty of the game against West. That, West is playing disciplined football thus far, but you know there goes a gain, a big gain on a second down. That brings it back to a third down and 10, so now they're back to their original line of scrimmage here to open up this uh, new set of downs. 
So a big third down here for West, trying to open up this second half on a big note. Villanueva in the shotgun. He has two running backs with him, one to each side. He'll take the snap, it's a high snap, and he bobbles it, but he goes down the sidelines looking, and he makes the pass. Fred Wilson, a big catch inside the 15-yard line. How did he come down with that? There was a cornerback in between him and the ball. It was Jordan Gruber. Somehow Wilson came down with that, Vance. As you see here on our AV instant, plus instant replay, the ball kind of waffles, floats a little bit. You think it's going to be an interception, and you look right there and say, that's going to get picked off. Oops right through the hands of Gruber and Wilson says, I'll take it, I'll raise you, and I'll see you first down. First and 10 now from the Golden Valley 15. Seven and a half left in the third. Villanueva now goes to Friesen, the sure-handed, sure-footed running back gets brought down. Speaking of sure hands there, Vance, Max Davis had sure hands on the outside corner right there, number 48 in the middle of your screen. Well, he was able to drag down Friesen. You see here, Friesen cuts it to the outside, and. Davis, oh man, holding on to that shoulder pad right there, the shoulder pad area of the jersey for dear life, and he brings down Friesen after a three-yard gain. Second and seven, I formation. Phil Nueva, quick handoff right up the middle goes to Perez. Carlos Perez gets about three or four yards. A good run up the middle. They fake the pitch to the outside to Friesen, and you've got to think that Golden Valley still a little bit dejected on their sidelines. You see the heads down, but nonetheless, you had to think that Golden Valley would have expected Friesen to get the ball there, so a good choice of play calls there by the West High offensive staff. So third and three. They're on the eight-yard line. They can still pick up a first down here. Friesen runs right behind Luna. And so it's a flag on the play, and... Louis Cantu, the aforementioned Louis Cantu, is slow to get up, and it looks as though I think Golden Valley jumped at that ball, Vance, to try to get the to try to knock the ball out of the hands, and that's exactly what it is. McKinley Williams was also a part of that offensive line, and well, they just went right after it, and Cantu is just kind of saying, "Hey guys, you know, do what you want to do. We're taking the first down." Exactly, first down, undisciplined play by Golden Valley. First and goal from the four. Bill Nueva hands off to Friesen. Friesen gets in. Touchdown. Untouched. West High School. Close. Close. To owning this football game. A lot of time left. I know the captain, Brian Williams, looks at the clock and says there's a lot of football events. But, captain, right now there seems to be some type of feeling in the air that West High School owns this football game right now. Well, Vance, you know, one thing that West High has done, like we said, is kept their composure and they've kept the pressure on Golden Valley. You know, finally broken through, got another touchdown up 31-13, and their defense has confidence now. A defense has been much maligned for most of the year, has confidence, and they're putting together some good series against this Ridgeview, I mean, Golden Valley offense. The PAT is good. 30 to 13, it was amongst 31 13. Amongst other things we talked about at halftime, we had a chance to bump into the longtime, legendary, iconic head football coach, West High School, one Dallas Grider, Bakersfield College head football coach, and Arvin Bear in high school, and a UCLA Bruin. Nice to see Coach Grider, eh? Thirty-one thirteen. Thirty-one unanswered points by West fans. You know, that would uh, speaking of Coach Griner, that brings me back to the days, you know, when I was a water boy on the BC sidelines. Boy, BC had some beastly teams back then, Vance. Talked to Coach Griner just a couple seconds, said hi to him, and said, you know what, your boys keeping his team kind of calm and composed over there. What do you say, Brian? He better. I, I want to know what year he was the water boy. Who, Matt? Two years ago. Up through senior year of high school. Just kidding. What did you say, Matt? Up through senior year of high school, Brian. Okay. 
I was the BC Waterboy from my seventh birthday until about my 14th birthday. And then I, I figured it wasn't cool after I uh, got into high school. <laughs> As Matt said, 31. 31 unanswered points by the Vikings. Let's see if the Bulldogs can get this thing going. Here's a pitching wedge. And it's caught at about the 30-yard line. And brought up to the 35, so it'll be first and 10, Golden Valley. Brian, give it, give us some kind of medicine for Golden Valley right now. What's the antidote right now? No offense, they've had a couple nice runs, but they've had some penalties. I think they have to stick with their running game. They had a good running game going. They had plenty of time. They're trying to get some opportunistic pass plays, but the side I would not throw to is where number two is roaming. You got to stay away from Fred Wilson because he can – he can pretty much end your series right away with one play. Well, one player that we haven't mentioned a lot, we've mentioned him a couple times, is Mustafa Cobb, the middle linebacker, as they go out to the right side. It's caught. A lot of room to run for Wiseman. Wiseman gets knocked out of bounds. Good play. Very good play for the, uh, the Bulldogs. Well, Brian, you talk about downfield blocking. You saw over there that Sean Graywall, the receiver, on the far side of the field, able to put a good block on that aforementioned Fred Wilson, and that's what sprung the wide receiver there, for, uh, Jacob Wiseman, for Golden Valley on that play to pick up the first down. You know, that's exactly what you do. Just, just take little nibbles uh, uh, out of them. You don't have to get big ones right away. Still on his feet. He's broken four or five tackles. What a nice run out there by Kwame Johnson. Kwame Brown takes the ball. Kwame Johnson. Well, Johnson, right if you remember side, last game that we did here, Vance, Bulldog, Johnson was uh, – had a nice little couple gains on pickups, big pickups there against North High School. And oh, he had some trouble holding on to the ball there, but did a good job of securing it after the fact. And then in that big pile, West has already stripped two footballs tonight and recovered them for fumbles. So a good job of holding on to the ball. First and 10. Nice job by that West defense. Johnson takes down to the four yard line. Uh, he was wrapped up at the line of scrimmage there. A good bit of tackling by Dion West. Six foot, 205 pound junior. Also a team cap. You see there West getting in. Good job by the West High interior defensive lineman as we near the five minute mark here in the third quarter. Second and seven. Martin has not been able to shine tonight in this ejection plague football game. Nice pass, though, in traffic and brought down at the 42-yard line, caught out there by Fair. I want you to watch at the end of this play. You see number six for West High, Kari Finch. He has an open shot on Fair, but he hears the whistle and he holds up. You see here, that was a thread-the-needle pass, but watch. As, the, as Fair is going down, you see Finch coming in right there and it just held up at the last minute. Look, and he even threw his hands up. He says, oh, oh, I know, I know, whistle blow. Third and two, right below us. Fair in motion. They fake it to Fair. They go up the middle. What a nice play. Could be a touchdown. We'll see. We never know. Will he get in? Fumble! Oh. <laughs> They're going to say he was down at the one-yard line. Oh, boy. Captain, what did you see? Well, man, you know, a great big hole right there when they came back on that counter and then it just ran to the first to the one yard line. It only hit his knee first and then the ball popped out. But Golden Valley is doing a good job of responding by just simply taking what they're giving them short passes and some running plays. Yeah, good call by the official. He was down. Excellent call. First and goal from the one yard line. Here come the Bulldogs. Martin hands the ball off, and that's a touchdown. Johnson gets in, and Golden Valley back in it. The coaching staff thrilled to see that they're still fighting along. Touchdown, Golden Valley. Well, after 31 unanswered West High points, Golden Valley doesn't go to their stalwart in Palacios. Rather, they go to Kwame Johnson, and Johnson able to bring this game within 12 points, if my math is right, Vance. Johnson, a junior, so... When it starts to get thin, they start to find other players that are going to step up and make plays. And uh, they're going to go for two here, trying to make it a 10-point football game. Martin takes a look. That's going to be complete, and that's going to be a nice two-point conversion. 31-21. So let's see if the tide is starting to turn back in favor of Golden Valley, who are down 
four players right now. You see here on the AV Plus Instant Replay, just a good bit of route running out there by Charles Fair, who had a big catch earlier in the drive, and he easily walks in untouched for the two-point conversion. 31-21, West High School leads. We're at Golden Valley. It's high school football game of the week. Pleasure to be with you this evening. Next week, well, we can finally announce the game. We know we're going to. <laughs> we know where everybody's going to be at. And uh, this is, we've heard rumors. I've been asked so many times that this game's getting moved to Memorial Stadium. I keep saying, where are all these rumors coming from? It's not going to be at Memorial Stadium. It's going to be at Centennial High School, where the Golden Hawks will be hosting the Bakersfield High School Drillers. Brian, first of all, your take on your drillers versus Kessler and company. Wow. Well, Vance, you know, one thing I know about the drillers, they want to run that ball and pound it in that little pistol offense. And, and well, you know, so you want to make sure they don't give Cody Kessler a lot of opportunities. He's a kid that's showing this year that he's gotten even more accurate, which is really scary. Because if he's going 20 for 24 wow. and 20 for 22, it's going to be a long night for whoever plays against him. I've heard reverberations from some of the Centennial faithful that it's going to be a blowout. And I said, hey, careful now, careful now, careful now. Here comes the kickoff. You've got to be kidding me. Look at this. Finch looking to get outside. Finch still on his feet. Finch up the sideline. Right down to the 28-yard line. Kari Finch with a 65-yarder. Well, that's just what the doctor ordered. If you're West, you give up seven points after having scored 31 straight. You put the throttle back down, and you're inside enemy territory once again, all the way down to the 25-yard line and West back in business, almost like they never lost a step, Vance. Goodness gracious, here they come. Villanueva in the I formation with 3.40 left to go here in the third quarter. Big kick returned by Kari Finch a moment ago, and the flag is thrown, play's gonna be whistled dead. And we'll see what the call is if it's against Golden Valley once again, and it is against Golden Valley once again. Look at again. these West High fans over here. They've been quietly cheering their team, making sure that they ha make it happen. This gal on the right right here, she's giving her West High sign. She told me before the game she's going into the Navy after graduation. Congratulations. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate that. Told those gals, you know what? Be patient. Our man's going to get over to this side of the football field. Another Golden Valley penalty. First and five, I formation. They go to Friesen. Friesen is brought down. Friesen on the right side. After about four right yards, it'd be very close to a first down. Well, that's a good play to run on first down because right now, I think what West is trying to do is just burn the clock as much as they can by keeping the ball on the ground. And they're certainly going to take up as much time as they possibly can on the play clock. As Villanueva heads back into the huddle, you see the audio visual plus instant replay. Friesen able to pick up four yards, bringing up a second down and one. Luna, the fullback, right behind Villanueva. Out to the right side is Dunn. To the left side is Wilson. They stay on the ground. What a nice tackle. A nice, nice tackle out there. And I think that was Wilkerson that made the tackle. Well, from my vantage point, that looked like it could have been a face mask, but we'll get a better, better view of it right here. And Wilkerson, well, he just he grabbed him by the uh, collar, it looked like. So, yeah, good tackle there by Wilkerson, the big defensive player, the 6'1 senior for Golden Valley. Third down now. Third and two, two and a half left in the third. Quarterback keeper. And I don't know if the way, but got it. Looks like he plowed ahead. And that's going to do it. First down. And a flag after the play, Vance. Oh. And, and Villanueva's getting up clapping. Dare I say, another ejection, Vance? Don't say it. Dare I say it? I dare you not to. Yeah, ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. conduct. No ejection. No ejection. <laughs> I guess that's the. Now we have. That's what we have to look for after an, uh, an unsportsmanlike play. We say, is he thrown out or does he stay in? All right. Well, officials. You know that, that that's an unenviable spot to be in for a Kern County official, for a high school official, 
to being involved in a football game like this. You have to do what you have to do. You have to call the game like you see it, but doggone it, you don't want to be a part of all this, but they've handled it quite well, Brian. Well, Vance, I mean, the thing about it, they're not even putting them to the, where the official, it's a questionable call. Exactly. I mean, these are just wide open personal fouls, and they're, and they're calling them doing their job. So it's not an official thing, it's the players on the field. First and goal from the six. Bill Nueva, right behind center. They give it to Friesen. Friesen's had two or three touchdowns tonight. He gets wrapped up about the four yard line. You know what surprises me to bring you up to date if you're just tuning in? Chris Brown, a senior, out of the game, ejected. Adrian Orozco, a senior, out of the game, ejected. Pedro Navieras, a senior, out of the game, ejected. These guys are playing their last year of high school football. Can you really afford to miss the remainder of this game and an entirely another game, especially if you're a prospect, a college prospect like Chris Brown, looking to make, looking to turn some heads, you know, if I, by some scouts? Yikes. Third and goal from the two. Going the way, but they go back to Friesen. Friesen pulls his way down to the goal line. Does he get in? He does not. Well, it'll be a big first down here. I'm tempted to say that West is just going to sneak it in here with Villanueva. But you see the big, the big man coming out. Oh, it's going to be a, what did he call, first down, Vance? They got a first down out of it, so now it's first and goal from the one. So. Well, that couldn't have been in a better spot. Four right. fresh downs from the one yard line. That'd be just wise to let this clock just grind away. <laughs> Again, eye formation. And this time, Villanueva just <laughs> pounds his way through there. So as Golden Valley looked like they were gonna get back in this thing, trailing only by 10. West High School wasted no time getting right back down the football field and punching it in for another touchdown. And that just shows the characteristic of this West High team never putting their heads down once. And like you said earlier in the game, Vance and Brian, after they were down 13-0, they came back. They knew they were down, but they scored 31 straight points, and now they put another six spot on the board after giving up their first touchdown since the first quarter. And they're about to go back up by 17 here with the extra point from Joseph Reyes coming. Strong left-footed kick of Reyes knocks it through, 38-21, 17-point lead for the Vikings. Next week, we will be at Centennial High School. We had them week zero as they played a, a team from up north. Wasn't a local team, so we didn't get to see two local teams going at it, but we started with Centennial. And <clears throat> now we're going to see them the last weekend of October against the BHS Drillers in a football game that everybody has put on their calendar. I know of a lot of fans and family and friends from other high schools that are not going to their game next Friday night. They're going to that game. Well, I think you're going to get one of the traditional games that you had uh, maybe in the, in the mid-90s where you had the big crowds coming to the games because of that magnitude. You're going to see about four or five Division One players in that game on that field at one time. And it's going to be a great game. I think, you know, our first time to see Bakersfield High School and Coach Gull and his staff, and I'm looking forward to that because, you know, the Drillers have only had one, bl one blip on the, on the map this year, and that was the one against Long Beach Poly. And since then, they've been really taking care of business. You can see where that ball's teed up, Vance. If, if, if uh, this was a real Stifler ref down here, that ball's teed up in front of the 40-yard line as it's pounded away there by West High. But ball's taken at the 15-yard line. He's got a little gap, and it's Palacios once again, and he's up to the 45-yard line. So again, good field position here by Golden Valley to start off this drive. We've seen that a couple times now by Golden Valley. And we have not been disappointed. In the third quarter, the wafting aroma that is like clockwork this time of the evening. It's back. Strolling along the airwaves here. <laughs> At least it wasn't a hot like a hot night like last time we were here. You're right. That just made it a it's ten only, times worse. It's only cool manure smell. All right, on a first and ten, uh, Palacios drag down midfield. Bring up second down, second and five as we 
race towards the end of this third quarter. 38-21, what a football game it's been. Marred by penalty flags, ejections, and really for the small crowd on both sides of the football field, there's been a lot to watch. A nice pass out to the left side. It's caught out there by Fair, but he's brought down right about the line of scrimmage. Didn't get much out of that. Martin's pass complete to Charles Fair. 17 point line. deficit for the Golden Valley Bulldogs. They have some of their talent left. See if they can roust it up, but I don't know if they're gonna get this play off. Three, two, they do. They get it to the right side, Palacios. What a nice tackle that was right there by Mustafa Cobb. That finishes the third quarter. We'll be back with what we expect to be a fitting in to a wild football game in the fourth quarter in a Bright House Network High School football game of the week. Fourth quarter. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970. With Dan Patrick in the morning. And Jim Rome, 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports. It's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. One network, one title, all the joy and tragedy to follow. TBS is the exclusive home of the 2010 American League Championship Series. Looking up, it's good. The best and brightest of the American League put it all on the line. Many will believe only one can go on. The stage doesn't get any grander than baseball in October. Unbelievable. Exclusive coverage of the American League Championship Series begins October 15th, only on TBS. Welcome back, right on time. Martin goes to the air, has a man. He's double coverage down there. Nice job by the West High defensive coaching staff. They saw it coming. They were gonna try to go to Gruber. Uh, sorry, they were gonna try to go to Gruwall, and he was double teamed down there by Christian Reeves and, of course, Fred Wilson. Graywall. So we start off the fourth quarter with a pass play. Tender for Graywall, and now we're at a second and 10. Martin has one running back behind him, and that, of course, is Emery Palacios. Looks like they're gonna go to the air again. No, it's an option pitch. And it's out to Palacios, and Palacios stays on his feet long enough to be brought down out near the uh, far side. Nice job out there by Finch to hold him up long enough. Yeah, Finch held him up. You're right, Vance. And they were able to make the tackle and limit the yardage gained on that play, but nonetheless, still going to be a third and four here. And you've got to think that Golden Valley's in four down territory now because their defense hasn't been able to stop West High's offense since the first quarter. Now you got Kwame Johnson in the backfield, Vance. Johnson now on a third and four. Still may go to the air here. And a big play out there. Oh, and he escapes danger. Martin gets out, goes to his left, and picks up a first down. That's a nice football play right there. First down, Golden Valley. Oh, boy, what a play. Well, Fair was his safety valve out there, and Fair's the one who caught the ball and picked up the first down. But like you said, what a play by Derek Martin to get out of that tackle. He was dead for rights here as Cameron Roberts had him, and Martin just pulled away, floated out a nice... Soft little pass, little pitch and catch there, and then a good move by Fair to break to the outside, pick up the first down. Really nice, first and 10. Martin in trouble again. This time I don't think he'll get free, and he doesn't. And he's thrown down this time by who else? Carrie Finch is having a nice series right now. Well, Finch got in quick on that play, but that was really dangerous for Martin. You saw him swinging his arm there as he was getting tackled on the way down. Never want to do that, because if you lose control of the ball, there's nothing but West High Vikings in your backfield, and that would have definitely gone for six. So 10 and a half left to go here. Golden Valley facing a 17-point deficit, and they're burning up a lot of clock right now. As Matt just said, second and 18. Johnson in the backfield with him. Might, not, might be a nice time for a screen play. That's what they're going to try. But West High reads it just perfectly. And this time Mustafa Cobb in there. 
Disciplined well, football right now, Brian. Disciplined football by the Vikings. West High's defense has played well pretty much most of the night. I mean, the first two series, they look real shabby, but they've toughened up and they've made some good plays. They're playing good assignment football. And they're just making it tough right now in Golden Valley to, to pick up first down. In the shotgun, the talented Derek Martin. Can he get some magic going? He throws it out to the right side. It's caught. It's going to be a first down. What a nice move that is. Caught out there by Greywall. Greywall, and Greywall does a nice job of getting some yards after the catch to earn that first down. Well, that was a great route run by Graywall. As you see here on the AV Plus Instant Replay, Martin finds Graywall. Boy, he was open by about five yards there, and that's just a breakdown in coverage on the defensive end there by West. As uh, third and 18, you can't expect to convert on West defense, but they did, and now it's a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. There's some life left in these Bulldogs. Martin in trouble, though. Big trouble. Huge trouble. Never goes down, never goes down, but boy, he was in trouble. Man, I he, promise you he was. He keeps swinging that football, Vance, every time uh, there's some pressure coming in on him, and hopefully we're gonna see a replay of that, but Martin, he needs to be more careful in holding that football. You see here on the AV Plus instant replay, Martin swinging the football right there. If, if that ball gets touched by his offensive lineman, there's so many factors that could be in play there. If that ball gets knocked loose, that's going back to the house. For a guy that never brought was never brought down, he was in trouble. Second and 19 now. In motion, Wiseman. They hand off to him. Wiseman goes around to the left side. Can he get outside? Oh, he loses his footing and is brought down or falls down about the 22-yard line. Brings up third and a lot. Well, they converted last time on third and a lot, and it is third and a lot. Third and 18 once again. They converted on a third and 18, and you better believe that West is going to be sniffing out that same pass play that went over to Graywall on the right side last time as Derek Martin getting the call from his offensive coordinator on the sidelines. Well, guys, if there's ever a time for you to get a pick six as a corner, this is when it is, when it's third and 18, because you can sit more or less about that where that first down marker is and make a break on the ball. Almost and that was almost off. it right there. Oh, Brian, Brian, you, oh, oh, my goodness. Well, everybody, that's why he's Brian Adams. Well, you could see that Finch, was that Finch down there on this side or was that Fred Wilson? Freddie Wilson. That was Wilson, but Martin had his eyes on Graywall the entire time and all oh, just off the fingertips of Fred Wilson. Great camera work down there. And like we said, they're in four down territory here. Fourth and 18, 8.02 left in this football game. Martin in trouble, nice screen play. Let's see if it develops, and it may, and it may. What a beautiful play, touchdown. Perfect play call, perfectly executed. The Bulldogs keep barking back. Kwame Johnson, once again, he scored their last two touchdowns, Brian. He definitely has, but a great play call right there by Eric sure to, to take away from the pressure, knowing they're going to bring some, throw the little screen play, and great, great drive right there by Kwame to get to the end zone, and he's keeping them in the game. As they're going for two again, so they're doing a great job. And that's a fight song that Brian Adams knows very well. Son, son. They didn't play it much last night, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have not, hey, I have not asked you about anything about last night, bro. All right, they're going to go for two again. Shotgun, oh, there's flags all over the place. A lot of movement. Didn't look ready at all. So on my count, that's 14. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's West High's fight song. So Golden Valley, West High share the same fight song. But West had it first. Or did UCLA? Or did UCLA? Or did Cal have it first? Come on. Cal, Cal had it, and UCLA took it because Cal hadn't trademarked it. But that's a that's an entirely different story. I'll I'll stay away from that before I get off on another tangent here. Matt Alvarez. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> College football fight songs. Back in a moment. Matt Alvarez. <laughs> Alma mater fight songs. We'll be back in a moment. Here we go, gonna try to get two out of this, not gonna happen. That's definitely the wrong play call if you're trying to convert two-point conversion. And why would you try for a two-point conversion that, at that Why don't point? they just go for the 28-38, the now they're down 11. Now you have to get a two-point conversion to make it a two-possession game. Well. Man, she said it was a full moon. Strange things have been happening. Oh, you got me going. Ow! Well, at least we haven't had any ejections in the second half. If you're just joining us, four players 
Oh, Out. there it is. There it is. And yeah, it is a full moon. My true love. There it is. One of the two Premier Equipment Rentals. That's the north side of the football field, or the north end of the football field. That's Kevin Willie. And that's his shot right there, right on top of the uh, West High Viking uh, coaching staff and their special teams. Of course, Kevin Willie, a proud West High Viking. Want to say hello tonight to Mr. Garber. Special hello to Mr. Garber, if you're still watching. Had a nice chat with him the other evening. Actually, it was last night. Said hi to him over at Tevis High School, watching some monumentally intense sixth grade volleyball. I was I was on the edge of my seat. Mr. Garber and I were enjoying some great volleyball over there. Hey, buddy. Thanks for watching and listening. Appreciate that. Well, Wes setting up for an onside kick here. I don't know if Golden Valley has the same thing in mind, but they do have three men to the right of the kicker, Cesar Ruiz. Well, which brings up a, a, a question here. Would Chris Brown normally be doing this onside kick? Well, there's a lot of questions we can ask. Yep, onside. Wow. And it's kicked straight out of bounds, penalty flag, a line drive as Reese chagrined by the event. 7.55 left in this football game. And right as Golden Valley seemed to be getting back in this deal, West High School marched down the field and scored. And then Golden Valley marched down the field and on a beautiful fourth down screen play, they get in the end zone and choose to go for a two point conversion. Don't get it. Now it's 38-27. And on the onside, they booted it out of bounds. So now they're gonna have to dig deep, get entrenched and see if they can hold this West offense that's had a lot of life here tonight. I formation for Villanueva. They go to Friesen. Friesen looks to get inside. Friesen breaks free. He's brought down at the 44-yard line. Nice tackle out there by Brian Wilkerson. And Wilkerson's had a really good football game. Well, a lot of east-west running there by Friesen, but he did pick up the first down, made a great cut to the outside as they continue to keep the ball on the ground and continue to wind the clock down here as we hit the seven and three quarters mark here in the fourth quarter. I think they're going to be taking up all the uh, play clock time they can, Vance? I would think first and ten, seven and a half left in the football game. Bill Nueva has done a nice job running this offense. And a good, good job by that Golden Valley defense of He's penetrating right on the snap. Mathematics alone, Captain. Mathematics alone, if they can just keep grinding that clock out, it's going to be awfully difficult for Golden Valley. You know, I mean, they definitely can't afford to just keep driving the clock down and not pick up first down. They got to pick up a first down here. If they don't, you're still going to have about six minutes and plenty of time with three timeouts to, to score two times. But, you know, West High's doing a good job of, of managing the clock and get the line credit because they're running the ball and the, and the big guys up front are opening up holes for, for Friesen. They stay on the ground again. Friesen brought down at about the 32, 33 yard line. Clock continues to tick. Continues to grind, and that's exactly what we're talking about. That'll bring up a third and four. Third and three, they say. That's a third and a short three here on just right above or right below where we're standing at Vance. So we'll see West obviously going to keep it on the ground, or you would think they were going to keep it on the ground for this third down attempt right here with Friesen in the backfield. Third and three, big, big play here for this Golden Valley defense. They don't go for the hard snap, and they, no, they don't hold him. Friesen looking to get free. Did he get a downfield block? He does. Friesen trying to get to the end zone. Touchdown, West High School. Well, what a great job by Friesen, but Brian, you might have seen that better than I did. Fred Wilson. Great job of downfield blocking, trying not to get in the way. He put his hands up when the guy had his back turned. You know, Fred did a great job first to come off the line like he's going to run a pass play, and he pulled Gruber out. And then when he couldn't get back in position, he thought to go after him when he saw his numbers. He put his hands up. That's great coaching, great job by Fred Wilson. Allowed 
Friesen to do his job and make the touchdown run. Man, the West High School crowd in the stands absolutely going bonkers right now. Our cameraman Carlos is just like caught in the middle of it all. There's the PAT, it's up and it's good. And that's a fired up West High Viking crowd right there. They are excited. <laughs> and then there's that young man. <laughs> He's just having a good time no He's matter what. loving it. Well, 45 to 27. Don't forget everybody, one of our great media sponsors, Crab, has the Crab Crush. We'll get to that in a moment. Before we get too far into the night here, we want to thank Premier Equipment Rentals for these great scissor lifts. They're a huge, huge part of the sponsorship package to avail these two great scissor lifts. Thank you. That's one of the shots. Also, audio, visual, plus replay. That's the great part of our sponsorship package with them. Audio, visual, plus everything you need for your AV needs, including the podium. How about this? Crab Radio. KHTY Fox Sports Radio 970. A big part of my day is <laughs> sports on Fox. And, of course, Dr. Todd Strain, KGET Friday Football Extra. Thank you to our media sponsors. We have the Crab Crush. Don't forget, a couple of big hits. We'll lay out in a few moments. 5.58. 17-point lead right now. 18-point lead for the West High Vikings. Along the big Vikings, that beat Palacios and Gruber. Deep for Golden Valley. Jordan Gruber. Who's with him? Looks like Gray Wall, Vance. And it's going to be Palacios that takes it at the 20-yard line. Palacios has some room. Palacios needs to make a move on the kicker. Can he do it? Hey, nice job by the kicker out there. Oh, boy. Brian Millen doing something that Matt Alvarez loves to see. Absolutely. Anytime the kicker can get involved in a tackle, Vance, puts a big smile on my face. As long as he doesn't get run over, though. Here's a great well, look at it. Palacios, Brian. Hey, he saved the, the touchdown. He did, a, he did. He did a great job of, of using that sideline as the extra defender. Exactly. But now Golden Valley has to be in a hurry-up mode with 5.50 left. They have to be in an attack mode trying to get the ball, catch it, get out of bounds, or pick up a first down, let the clock stop, and hurt in a hurry-up offense. Martin has the talent, has the skill. And right there, he underthrew his receiver. Uh, got it. I'm hexing all these people. Well, he had fair. He had fair open on the far side, but just underthrew the ball. It's going to be second and ten, but it does stop the clock. <laughs> Golden Valley has all three timeouts left, as does West High. Second and ten. Martin, they go to Palacios. Palacios looks to get outside, makes a nice move. Takes a couple of big hits, but he hangs on and picks up a first down. And there's a flag. After the long first down, another unnecessary hit by a Golden Valley teammate. Oh, boy, Steven Cabrera and Cabrera, senior lineman. As you see on the right side of your screen, he's down on the grass right there, and I don't know if we'll see it now. Uh, Cambrera comes in at the very end, right about there. The play is over and done, and Cambrera lays it on Michael Dunnan. Is this, is, this, is this throwback to, like, 1970s uh, Oakland Raider football? No, the Raiders weren't this dirty. Second and ten. Five and a half. Martin has the time, and it's picked off! Wow. What a play by Michael Dunn. What a play. Captain, what do you think? He's come up a little limp. I hope he's okay. But he's a playmaker, fellas. That's what we talked about before the game. Well, not before the game, in the beginning of the game, that he's a playmaker, and you got two of them out there in your secondary, and Dunn, I told you that they can't rescore three touchdowns a game, and here he is jumping up using a 6-3 frame, snatching the ball to watch the agility, jumping over a guy, making another guy miss. That's just raw athleticism, fellas. These kids can jump 
as high as I've ever seen any high school football players, Michael Dunn and Fred Wilson out there on the outside, both interceptions as we now we have a timeout here by West. Well, the coaching staff telling Javon Howington, you're supposed to be in there, young man. <laughs> Howington caught up in the action, didn't get on the football field, so with 5.18 left. Matt, tomorrow you're going to be taking place in uh, – well, first of all, before I, before I have you tell my sto your story, I'd like to see what's happening here. Here's Carlos Anguiano, known for his top-notch camera coverage. He gets the best action on the field, and he gets the best crowd up there. Matt, you're taking place, you're taking part in something very, very special tomorrow out at Taft. Why don't you tell us what's going on? Well, it's an alumni football game, Vance. It's, it's a Taft High School's alumni against all high schools in Bakersfield alumni, and it's part of their uh, Oil Dorado Days celebration. And, I mean, we've got guys out there on our team that are, you know, range from 20 years old to 38, 40 years old out there. And, uh, you know, the same goes that, for Taft. Wait, that old? Wow. <laughs> and, no, Robin Williams is not going to be there. It's, it's like a remake of the uh, – the best of times movie, except uh, we're going to rewrite the ending to that movie. That's wow, for sure. it's going to be great. You'll be kicking, of course. I'll be kicking. Tickets are still on sale. Wow, nice, nice play out there. And one of the Golden Valley Bulldogs that uh, Brian has, has kept his cool and really, really played well tonight is number 23, uh, and, and that's Brian Wilkerson, the, uh, the senior uh, wide receiver, linebacker. He's played a really good game tonight. Well, he's played the game the way the game's supposed to be played, Vance. You play to the whistle. You give everything you have, and you don't leave anything out. And he's done that all night long. Matt, good luck tomorrow. Looking forward to some stats. Looking forward to some highlights. Hope you kick a nice 60-yarder for us. I hope so, too. The game's up in Taft at 4 o'clock, so should should be uh, perfect football weather. You're playing hooky on me tomorrow night for Renegade football. Apologize for that, Vance. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm supposed to be off. You know, yeah, I might throw that in. You won't be on the sidelines coaching, catching Coach Judy as he uh, goes off at halftime. But, hey, we'll make do. Tomorrow night, my guest analyst will be none other than West High Viking hero and Renegade legend MVP of the 81 Potato Bowl, Jim Maples. And oh, Carson's assistant coach. Well, then you'll be in good hands, Vance. You don't need me. You're right. <laughs> I might show up for the second half. Third and 12, four minutes left here in this football game. Villanueva has two running backs beside him. He's in the shotgun. They may go to the air. And a timeout's called by the West Side coaching staff. Right at the last second, they saw something there. <clears throat> Let's go back to the discussion of next Friday night's football game on High School Football Game of the Week. We'll be at Centennial Bakersfield High School Drillers. We haven't had them yet on television. We know we're going to have them. <laughs> more than just next Friday night as we get deeper into the season, into the playoff. That is a football game that has all the makings of a media dream scenario for television, for radio, for print next Friday night. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of Fresno print media coverage, you know, come down here for this game because this is probably the biggest game in the Valley next week, BHS at Centennial. That's a good point. And it's, you, you can't write a script for this game because it's going to be so big you have Cody Kessler you have Brian Burrell you've got the offensive or you have the offensive Centennial versus the defensive BHS both of these teams are top-notch programs they're the best programs in Bakersfield arguably two of the best programs in the valley going head-to-head -head next week well, you're talking about one kid we talk about you talk about uh, Burrell you talk about Kessler but you're going to see Mercy Matson, who some yep. say is the best secondary player in town Sean Johnson you're going to see a lot of great other players out there they go to the air on a third and oh boy what a nice pass and really nice defense out there a beautiful job defending the pass out there is jordan gruber gruber does it again well you know gruber's had a great game fellas i mean you're talking another guy who's played well played hard he had an interception when he missed it and actually that's the one you know i think it's second catch or third catch fred wilson got but when he had the break on the ball and went through his hands, he's been in good position on his secondary coverage. And here, person of fourth down with 347 left. So give Gruber, he's also played a uh, good ball game as well. He and Graywall will be deep. And they're standing at their 20 yard line. Three forty-seven left. And the 
punter is Brian Milan or Millen. And uh, it bounces perfectly at the 15 yard line. Well, for Golden Valley now, it's just about maintaining their composure. And this game has certainly gotten out of hand for them if you're just joining us. Three Golden Valley players have been ejected from this game. They already had one that was suspended for this game because of an ejection last week at Garces and DeAndre Stallworth. But Chris Brown, their main threat, out. Adrian Orozco, the stalwart on defense, out. Pedro Nevieras, a defensive lineman, also out. All three for just unnecessary flagrant penalties. Martin. Oh, almost picked off right there. It was an intended for Graywall, and it almost deflected itself right into the hands of Zubarin. You see here on the AV Plus instant replay. Watch this. The ball could have been caught. Oh, no, just a one-handed effort by Gru uh, Gru Graywall, rather. Martin's going to go to the air again. This time out to the right side, and it's going to be caught by Graywall. Graywall takes a couple of big hits, but I think he got the first down. Well, if they go by forward momentum, and yeah, the uh, referee on the other side has that forward momentum, so it will be a first down. So a good job of Graywall by holding on to that ball. Yeah, he did took a big hit. We heard that. That was right below us, Vance. A pretty loud helmets popping. You see right here, boom. But he had the first down, so first and 10. Game's not over. 45-27. Does Golden Valley have enough in the tank to make a miraculous comeback? Martin in trouble, and he has to get rid of it rather than take a big loss. Bring up a second and 10 for Bulldog. So with 3.12 left to go in this game, West up 45 to 27. All West needs to do here is just maintain their composure and not succumb to any dumb penalties. Second and 10, Martin, shotgun. This time they go on the ground to Palacios. Palacios gets brought down to the 32 yard line. That clock will continue to go. Well, Golden Valley is short-handed to begin with. I mean, we, you talked about earlier in the game, Vance, that their sideline didn't look like it had too much depth, and now they're going to go into next week at Miramonte, another league game minus three of their best players. So definitely going in there short-handed next week. We got the left side. <clears throat> nice pass, and it's caught out there by Fair. Fair still on his feet. Fair looking to get loose. Driven out of bounds at a midfield or a little bit further than midfield. So keep battling. That's what you want to see. One thing that you don't want to do, though, if you're, Kari Finch, if you're Kari Finch, he's had a pretty good defensive game thus far. You see Finch is going to go for the strip right here. He's going to go for the strip on fair. He didn't get the ball out. If you can't make the strip, you have to at least make the tackle. Otherwise, you're going to get a big gain out of it like Charles Fair just did. Slant to the inside. Oh, this time it goes right through the hands of... Charles Fair. And guess who hit him? Finch. You know, if you're the West High defense players now, you want to almost umbrella everything. You don't want to let anybody get to the sideline and get out of bounds. They catch the ball, that's fine, but you're going to keep them in the field of play so that clock keeps run ticking so they have to use timeouts. The right DB is Pollard, the left DB as Martin's in trouble. Martin. He went to intentionally ground it, threw it off the helmet. He went to ground. He went to. Uh, yeah, like you said, Vance, he was just trying to get rid of it, but he hit Kwame Johnson. And I think that's why they didn't call intentional grounding. I mean, he obviously meant to get rid of it. He had no intentions whatsoever of completing that pass, but it just happened to be that Kwame Johnson was right there in his face. Hey, he's a receiver, right? Yeah, he is. 3rd and 10, 228 left here at Golden Valley. Martin. Again, finds his man, Graywall. Graywall with a couple of nice moves, still on his feet. That is one piece of great running out there by Graywall. You know, not only that, that's where you want to go. You have a new uh, cornerback in Wambach. He hasn't really played all game long, so just this series, because Dunn is out of game. So you want to go after him. He, he's a little cool night, a little bit tired than the other guys. So you want to continue to attack over there on that, on that other sideline. First and 10. And the pass is too low. And Charles Fair to go down and get it. Ends up on his knees. 
Lost three on the play. Bring up, Tony's right bring on down the lead. Well, there you go. You mentioned Brian Adams that Dunn was out of the game. You see he has an ice pack there on his left left leg after making that interception. And, you know, it looked after that interception like he got flipped over. He got bent awkwardly after he jumped up in the air. Maybe that's just from jumping up so high in the air. Possibly twisted an ankle on his landing. Thrown out there, nice pass, nice catch. And Brian, you said it, he gets out of bounds. Nice route by Greenwall. Graywall gets out of bounds, that's nice. You know, Vance, he's had a sneaky good game. He just made some just great route running, as, as Matt alluded to earlier, and he's sure-handed. You haven't seen him drop or bobble any of the ball so far. Third and two. And uh, timed it to where it was nearly picked off. And guess who was in the middle of that one, Vance? That was Finch. Kari Finch once again. He's had a big defensive night here for West High. All right. On a fourth and two. Here's pretty much everything right here for Golden Valley, just to even keep the drive going. Fourth and two, Brown. Puts it out to his left side. And it's going to be caught out there by Fair. Fair still on his feet. Fair. Gets in! Touchdown, Golden Valley! Well, you got a flag here on the near side, Vance, right here by the west sidelines. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And it's an illegal shift. So stop the music, stop the band. This one's coming back, Vance. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Just salt on the wound. Salt on the wound for Golden Valley. A nice, nice effort by Charles Fair to get into the end zone. And you know, and it's called back. You know, Vance, if this score holds up, Golden Valley came into this game four and two. Their two losses, they had given up a combined 104 points in their two losses. So with this, with this loss, if the score holds up, like I said, that'll be 149 points that opponents have scored in Golden Valley's three losses. 102 plus 45. Would you say 100? 104 plus 45. Oh, okay. Martin looks to the end zone and he overthrows his receiver. And that's going to do it. We have a minute six left. So at this time, what about the crab crush? Dig this, everybody. The hit of the night brought to you by Crab Radio, the Crab Crush. Dig this. <laughs> The Crab Crush Hit of the Week. Brought to you by 1061 Crab Radio. And tonight's Crab Crush brought to you courtesy of number 13, Corey Friesen. And it's an offensive Crab Crush this week. Boom! Pow. Right there. Wow, an offensive Crab Crush. Kendall Banducci. The oh. Crab Crush of the Week. Corey Friesen on Kendall Banducci. All Back right. to you, Vance. Oh, thank you, Matt. <laughs> that was that was that was and, and that was Matt Alvarez. <laughs> thank you, Matt Alvarez. There's a funky smell on the field tonight. This is Matt Alvarez. <laughs> Brian, see what you started? See what you started. I'm, I'm still waiting on our dinners, man. He's like about seven dinners in the rears to us. Well, our cameraman Tony is down on the field, and he's right next to all these Vikings that are absolutely pumped up right now. They know they're on Bright House Network's high school football game of the week. And uh, for those of you that <clears throat> have watched the whole thing tonight, you've seen a very perplexing football game if you're a Golden Valley, Golden Valley fan. And if you're a West High School fan, you've loved every minute of it after it was 13 to nothing. We had three ejections and some key ejections. So that'll do it for tonight. For Matt Alvarez, for Brian Adams, we are done for the night. We are looking forward to next Friday night, Bakersfield High School at Centennial. It's been a full moon football night tonight for sure. I'm Vance Palm. On behalf of the Godfather, Zachary Flores and his entire crew tonight, have a wonderful weekend. Good night. God bless.
get in the game. The Friday Night Blitz is on. Friday Football Extra. And it's a complete football package on Sunday night after the NFL. FFX Sunday Night Edition. All the scores, all the highlights, all the stories from the gridiron. Coverage of your favorite school, plus the FFX Game of the Week, Friday Football Extra. FFX, the Sunday Night Edition, only on 17 News after Sunday Night Football. Local football action, get in the game. Bakersfield's only sports station that's all sports all day, every day. Fox Sports Radio 970 with Dan Patrick in the morning and Jim Rome 9 to noon. Home for the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and NASCAR. And now the home for the Bakersfield Condors. No swap shop, no tradeo, no cheap coupons. Sports. It's all we do. Fox Sports Radio 970. Got a job to do? Premier Equipment Rentals is your answer. Residential or industrial, we've got exactly what you need to get the job done. Whether it's a drill, trencher, bobcat, backhoe, or excavator, you can always count on Premier Equipment Rentals. And with our new extended hours, we're available when you need us. Check us out at 3217 Patton Way and 5001 Stein Road, or give us a call to find out more. Don't forget to ask about our weekend specials. Make your next project a breeze with Premier Equipment Rental. Football season's here and I've been waiting all year. Head high, no looking back, no fear here. 